Welcome to Coors Light Fox College Football. TCU safety Sam Carter won National Player of the Week honors against SMU. Kansas middle linebacker Ben Heaney leads the Big 12 in tackles. Those stars are on display today in Fort Worth, where passionate fans are ready to pack newly rebuilt Amon G. Carter Stadium on Fox College Football. as TCU takes the field, hosting the Kansas Jayhawks. It's the first time these two teams have played here in Fort Worth in 17 years. It's Fox College football at Amon G. Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas. Today, the Kansas Jayhawks battle the TCU Horn Frogs. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Folliwell. The storyline is pretty simple for both of these teams today. They've yet to taste victory in the Big 12. Someone's going to walk out of here today with their first Big 12 conference win and get their season pointed, hopefully, in the right direction. Direction. My partner in the booth is analyst Brian Baldinger. First, let's talk about TCU. Just like every year under Gary Patterson, the defense is very, very solid. Offense, they are trying to improve things, and I think it starts with quarterback Trevon Boykin. It has to. I mean, this is Trevon Boykin's 13th start at quarterback for TCU, and he's no longer inexperienced or young or any of that. Now, he leads the team in rushing, but this is a team that has gotten off to bad starts here, and they need Trevon Boykin to play quarterback, to distribute the ball to a lot of wide receivers early in this game to get this offense jump-started. Kansas comes into the game with a record of 2-2 two and two this year. When you look at the Jayhawks, Baldy, we want to talk with J.C. Pearson, our sideline analyst, about this as well. But what are your concerns for the Jayhawks going into today's game? Well, they're starting their fifth offensive line combination in five games right now. Gavin Howard in at center for the first time of his career. And really, they've got to play better up front, and they've got to play better together up front, J.C., if this Kansas offense can execute today. Yeah, they really do, Baldy, because they want to go back to doing what they did best last year, and that's running the football. James Sims led the entire Big 12 in rushing last year. He's a strong, tough runner, and I hope he got a lot of rest last night because they're going to work him today. They say they're going to hand him the ball 25 to 30 times. So in large part, how well this Kansas offense does today is going to depend on how well James Sims is able to run the ball. Well, J.C., if James Sims reaches that 30, that will equal his career high, which he had in a game against Texas Tech last season. They're taking the field here in Fort Worth, Texas. We're in Cowtown for TCU and Kansas. It kicks off on Fox College Football coming up next. Selling truck for 36 straight years. They are used to these morning kickoffs. It's the third time for an 11 a.m. kickoff here in Fort Worth. Mark Falwell, Brian Baldinger, J.C. Pearson on an 81-degree cloudy day here at Amon G. Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas. This is the 30th all-time meeting between the Kansas Jayhawks and the TCU Horn Frogs. TCU leads the series 17 wins to eight losses, four ties. Their first meeting was in 1942. This is their second time to meet as Big 12 conference foes last year in the second game of the season in TCU's first Big 12 game. They won 20 to 6 in Lawrence. And here we go with Jaden Overchrome kicking off for TCU. They won the toss. They're deferring their option till the second half. Kansas will field in the end zone. It's a touchback. And so with that, we look at our Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, players to watch for Kansas's offense and TCU's defense, Baldy. Well, I think Brandon Bourbon is a guy that's going to get a start at wide receiver. But we'll see him all over the field, in the backfield, on sweeps. Gavin Howard makes his first start at center. They're trying to solidify the offensive line. And Terrell Lathan is replacing a couple defensive ends, Devontae Fields and Matt Anderson out today. And Jason Brett is um, everybody's favorite cover corner in this conference. 31 passes defense in the last two years. Kansas starts the game after the touchback on their own 25. They sent Bourbon in motion. And the game plan today, as J.C. Pearson noted at the top, is to run the ball and run it a lot. And the first play is off the left side, James Sims for three yards. Paul Dawson has moved in and started at middle linebacker for TCU and makes the tackle. Jake Heaps, the quarterback for Kansas, is a transfer from BYU. Those are his career numbers between two years with BYU and one season at Kansas. Charlie, of course, recruited Jake Heaps at Notre Dame. Ended up going to BYU, didn't work out there, transferred back, set out last year, and is a starter this year. 
And once again, it's James Sims. This is a homecoming for him. He's from down the road in Irving, Texas, went to MacArthur High School in his second carry of the game. And that's a four to five yard pickup, putting them in third down and short. Yeah, now look, Charlie said, you know, to us on Thursday that he'd love to run the ball twice as much as he'd like to throw it today. But when it's third and two, do you have the confidence in a, a shook up offense line to hand it to James Sims one more play? We'll see if they do it. With two receivers to the right, one left. They are without Tony Pearson, their leading receiver, who was hurt last week against Texas Tech. They do have the confidence to run the ball behind that offensive line, and successfully, on third and two, Sims slams up forward for seven yards. Well, they have had four different centers this year going back to the spring. Now, this is a pretty good job up front. Gavin Howard in at center. Uh, Smithberg at right guard right now. Pretty good job pushing all the way back to the tight end. Uh, Mundi. And so a good push and good cut by James Sims. Officially six, so he's run for 14 yards. And now Heaps dropped back to the delay handoff and straight ahead again to Sims. Marcus Mallon at linebacker with a tackle on the two-yard pickup out beyond the Kansas Fort. Uh, James Sims is a guy that really he's, he's run the ball well. But he just hasn't had that many carries. He's only had 64 carries in the first four games. That's 16 a game by my math. Very good. Uh, Nicely very good, done. Yeah. And uh, long division. But they'd love to get him up to, like JC said, 25 or 30 times a day. 20 is as high in a game this year. He's already at number five. But this one is a struggle for yardage. Only a pickup of one, leaving them in third and seven, JC. Yeah, and guys, remember Gary Patterson, when we talked to him yesterday, told us that defensively they weren't going to come out and be aggressive from the start. They were going to try to see what Kansas was going to try to do offensively because every week they've had a different offensive game plan. Today, obviously, it's to pound the run, and now you start to see those TCU safeties start to creep up. Now, obviously, it's a passing situation here, but in rundowns, watch those safeties creep down to the line of scrimmage. Kansas this year, 33% on third down and a fumbled handoff. Jake Heaps appears to be back on the ball, but the play is blown up on the fumble. They lose yardage and never get a chance to do anything, Baldy. And when you're on your fourth center, those are the kind of things, as a coach, you never get comfortable with. Now, they had a lot of bad... That's a good snap. I mean, that was just basically... James Sims didn't think he was getting the ball. And now, whether that was a fake there, that was a good snap. Uh, just really a muffed play between Sims and Heaps on that play. Trevor Pardula, as you saw, is second in the nation, averaging 47 and a half yards a kick. Cameron Eccles Looper is waiting to return. And a good boot by Pardula, a junior college transfer. Eccles Looper had a seam up the gut, fielding at the 10, returns for 12 yards. Josh Ford tackle. Let's look at the Academy Sports and Outdoors right stuff players to watch for the TCU offense and the Kansas defense. Well, B.J. Catalan is the guy that is a catalyst for this offense, either at running back or as a punt returner. Wayman James. I mean, this is a powerful man. I mean, in the history of TCU football, he has the highest per average per run that there is. And Ben Heaney for Kansas had led the Big 12 in tackles a year ago. Off to a good start this year. And Victor Simmons is the guy that's all over the field for the Kansas defense. Javon Boykin, second season at TCU. He's from Mesquite, played his high school ball for the West Mesquite Wranglers and had just gaudy numbers as a senior in high school. Starting for the 21, and an interception that went through the hands of the intended receiver and a pickoff by Isaiah Johnson at the TCU 25. Went right through the hands of Dexter Linton. And you get an easy interception here by Isaiah Johnson, and look, they went spread formation right here. Just gonna get a, a quick stop right now. There's Linton, he's gonna get his hands on the ball, he's gonna read this all the way. He comes up, gets the hit, and Isaiah Johnson is the benefactor right now. And yeah, Wayman James had a chance to yeah. catch it. But through the hands of Wayman James and Trevon Boyd, can you see his reaction after his fourth interception of the season? Fourth interception, but one that well, he'll look back at yeah. as not being on him. It's not on him. The ball came out hot. They obviously wanted to come out and establish the passing game first before. And off Sims. Sims was hit at the line by Paul Dawson, able to fight forward for a gain of three. TCU has been good about protecting the ball this year. They came into the game plus seven 
in turnover margin. That'll drop to a plus six. It's the eighth turnover force this year by the KU defense. And really, the same things that have crept up in this TCU offense hamstrung them again. I mean, they didn't have a first down against Oklahoma last week until halfway through the third quarter. A game they ultimately lost 20 to 17. TCU has also stumbled this year against LSU and Texas Tech. An inside handoff as we see Nick Sizemore carry for the first time and force it down to the 19 of TCU. Let's watch the right guard here. He started every game right now as a junior college uh, transfer, Smithburg. I mean, he just completely oversteps right there on the defensive tackle. And that kind of penetration has been killing this run game of Kansas. They're not playing well together. It's not about individuals. It's when you step that wide, is the center stepping with you? And he's not. And so they're not in sync up front. That was an example. The run offense is 90th in the nation at 137 yards a game. Heaps to throw. Rolling. This will be the first pass of the game. There's a flag down. It's an incompletion in the end zone for Trey Parmley. And again, a marker is down on the play. Cooper Castleberry. Holding number 61 of the offense. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Lewandowski from Overland Park, Kansas, starting at left tackle for the first time today. Well, here's Lewandowski, and he's going to get beat inside, and his only option right here is to reach out and grab him with the right hand. And so that's Lathan who's getting the start today because of injuries up front to Devontae Fields and Anderson. But that's he's been, he went from center the last two weeks to left tackle. There's no way that he's had enough reps out there to really feel comfortable with that kind of an inside move. This is a 37-yard field goal attempt. It's Matthew Wyman who gets Kansas on the board first, connecting on his fifth field goal in seven attempts this year. Kansas scores points off the turnover. An interception through the hands of Wayman James, picked by Isaiah Johnson. The Jayhawks turned it into the first three points of the game. Number five with his second interception of the season, setting up the field goal that puts Kansas on top five minutes in. Fox College Saturday continues with a huge Pac-12 showdown between second-ranked Oregon and 16th-ranked Washington, followed up by Conference USA, Tulsa, and UTEP on Fox Sports 1. Fox Sports, your home for college football all season. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see when Oregon starts to miss Chip Kelly. <laughs> you know? Not yet. Mark Elfrick is doing an unbelievable job there holding it together. Marcus Mariota. Uh, putting up points in record numbers out there at uh, Alston Stadium in uh, YouTube. B.J. Catalan returned to kickoff for a touchdown earlier this season against LSU. One of the three games that TCU lost this year by a combined 23 points in the three losses. A high kick by Trevor Pardula. Catalan at the six. Catalan with room to run, and then he'll be pushed out of bounds out past the 35 by Prince Candy. Right now, we need to check in with Laura McKeeman. She's got a Fox College football game break. Laura. All right. Well, hey there, Mark. We got some ACC action for you. Pittsburgh at number 24, Virginia Tech. And Calvin Klein with a 27-yard touchdown reception from Logan Thomas to put Virginia Tech up 7 to nothing in the first over Pitt. We'll be tracking that among many other games throughout the course of this late morning and then on into the early afternoon with 9.54 left of the first Kansas leads 3-0. Including a pretty big rivalry right down the road, the Red River rivalry. A handoff after Wayman James had a pass go through his hands and was intercepted last time. Wayman James carries the ball and Kiba Augustino, a senior from one of your favorite towns in Texas, Katy, just outside of Houston, Augustino on the tackle. Uh, one of the real powerhouses in Texas high school football, Katy, Texas, of course. They had a quarterback here from Katy High School that was pretty good, doing a pretty good job with the Cincinnati Bengals right now. Andy Dalton. A four receiver set. Ladarius Brown, David Porter are split to the near side. Boykin. Rolling over the middle finds David Porter in Kansas territory. He spins down near the 40 of the Jayhawks and will gain 22 on the play. Johnson, who had the interception a moment ago, slings him down. Yeah, and Porter just running a, a deep in cut. And Boykin with good play action, holding the linebackers, and uh, threw it right over. 
This is what they say they wanted to do today on offense. Jared Anderson, one of their co-offensive coordinators, told us yesterday they want to get a sense of urgency on offense, force the issue by playing more up-tempo. They snap for the Kansas 41. Boykin to throw again. This time he finds Ladarius Brown from Waxahachie to the Kansas 34 on a pitch and catch of seven. Yeah, the two offensive coordinators, Jared Anderson and Rusty Burns. Burns works with the quarterbacks. Anderson, the coordinator, do it in tandem upstairs right now. That's new for TCU putting them both upstairs this week. TCU averages 63 snaps per game on offense. Jared Anderson told us they'd like to be up around 75 to 80. Well, they found the urgency they're talking about is they, they played their best offense when they were behind, and they had to play catch-up, as they did last week against Oklahoma. And here's an inside handoff. Big room for B.J. Catalan, cutting to the sideline, 20. And pushed out of bounds by Isaiah Johnson at the 10. But in order to have that kind of room to run, you got to block Ben Heaney, their middle linebacker. Here's Heaney. So how they get to him right here, he, comes, he plays back door. He's playing the option on that play, and that's what opened up the middle that time for Catalan. Catalan bumped out of bounds by Johnson. Johnson is second to Heaney on the Kansas defense and tackles. Now first and goal for TCU. TCU and Kansas have each scored 10 points in the first quarter this season coming into play today. The Jayhawks already have three, courtesy of the TCU turnover. Midway through the first. At the nine on first and goal, down goes Catalan. There's Ben Heaney. Got blocked last time, but not then. Well, he took himself out of the play last time, and really, that's an example of them trying to defend Boykin more than Catalan. I mean, he went with Boykin, who was running that zone read option that everybody runs some version of right now in college football. And he went out taking the quarterback, and that was a good read by Boykin. The longest rushing play this year for TCU is 30 yards. Catalan came close to that a moment ago with that 25-yard gallop, but then lost a yard. Now second and goal. Big handoff. Open field to the left, and Boykin will walk it in from 10 yards out for the touchdown. That's his third rushing touchdown of the year. Right now, Kansas doesn't know what to do to stop this option. I mean, you jump outside to take uh, to take Boykin, and they hand it off to Catalan. Now they tackle the pitch or the dive, and Boykin walks in outside. They're a man short on two big running plays on that drive. Javon Boykin's third rushing touchdown. Jaden Overcrone, sophomore from Arlington Martin High School here in the DMW Metroplex. 18 of 18 this year on extra points. They blare the foghorn, the froghorn that is, after Trevon Boykin scores from 10 yards out. TCU up 7-3. Welcome back to Fox College Football. Due to time constraints, we'll move ahead to later in the game after these commercial messages. In the first quarter in Fort Worth, TCU leads Kansas 7-3. Both of these teams are searching for their first Big 12 victory. At the other end of the spectrum, at the top of the conference, Brian, Baylor, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma, all undefeated overall, the most undefeated teams by any conference in the nation. The Big 12 continuing to be a primarily passing league, second most passing yards per game in the nation. And, of course, TCU has seen two of those teams, along with LSU. They've played three teams, three losses. And look at this, Brian. Yeah. 70 Big 12 touchdown drives this season, covering 50-plus yards in two minutes or less. Of course, Baylor has 25 of those 70 drives in under two minutes. So teams are scoring quickly because they play quickly. And TCU trying to play more quickly themselves today. As noted earlier, they're averaging 63 snaps on offense per game. Their goal today, in a perfect world, be up in the 75 to 80 range. A trips set to the right. Ladarius Brown was the only receiver left. And a throw and catch by Ty Slanina, the true freshman from East Bernard, who had a TCU high six receptions at Oklahoma last week. Yeah, I mean, he was the one bright spot at the wide receiver position in that loss to Oklahoma. Boykin to Slanina for six, the 12th reception this year for Ty Slanina. Boykin ran it in for TCU's touchdown. Kansas' score was Matthew Wyman. Connecting on a 37-yard field goal that was set up by Isaiah Johnson's interception at the TCU 25. Just got a look at Ben Haney, number 31 for Kansas, their middle linebacker, the leading tackler in the Big 12. Boykin goes down, ran it, and lost yardage. 
Well, this is one of those plays where they actually start moving before the snap. The quarterback in the back, they actually want to kind of pitch this ball. But the quarterback kind of gets a little head start as he's moving to his right. Watch, he's going to start moving to his right here and catch the snap on the move. They kind of get it on the run here. Get a little bit of a head start, a little Canadian football league in yeah. there as you start moving actually before the snap. I thought Kansas did a good job of uh, really being that one up. Ben Goodman and number 97, Ty McKinney from just down the road in Weatherford make the tackle. He's a throw down the seam on TCU's first third down attempt in the game and an incompletion for Slanina. Oh, he has Slanina, too, on the skinny post, and he just overshot him. I mean, here he is. I mean, he's just going to run just right down the seam here. I mean, it's, and it's there. It's in front of the corner, in front of the safety there, and he's just a little bit off. But those are the type of plays that you got to make if you're going to jump up and play some of those teams that we just talked about, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, LSU, if you want to play with them, you got to make those throws at quarterback. Ethan Perry punting for the first time. Connor Embry will see this go past him and bounce out of bounds. Kansas will start. They'll mark it off at the 18. We you know it went out of bounds that far upfield. Gary Patterson doesn't like it. It will improve Kansas's field position. We'll see if there's going to be another steady diet of James Sims, who's already run the ball six times in the game, as Kansas trails at Fort Worth by four. Fox College football game break to the SEC we go Missouri at number seven Georgia Aaron Murray with a pass to Brendan Douglas for seven yards for the touchdown the Bulldogs strikes first we'll keep an eye on this one Mark and Brian because some have put Georgia on upset alert thank you very much Laura we're here in Fort Worth apparently we've got a new member that has joined our stat crew today. He's not working with us in the booth, but he's keeping an excellent play-by-play -play down on the field of each play so far and leads us to Kansas yeah. first and 10 at their own 18-yard line. You know, I like the manual way of doing things. I don't need the electronics. Give me a pen and a piece of tape, and I'll keep track. I can vouch for this. Baldy does not have a smartphone. He still has a flip phone. Inside handoff here, James Sims, his seventh carry of the day, and gains two, JC. <laughs> yeah, I kinda, I'm kind of with Baldy, kind of old school. Not the technology, not really up on it, but watching this game down here on the, on the field, watch the defensive line of TCU. Those guys are really dominating the line of scrimmage so far. Those three down linemen are controlling the offensive line. Not a lot of room to run inside for James Sims. Well, you guys are talking old school. And Sims will run here and is up into the 25, but dives out near the first down marker. Gary Patterson said something kind of old school to us yesterday, and that is he still believes, talking about what J.C. said about the D-line, that, that winning football on the defensive side comes down to stopping the run. It doesn't have to be a run play. It can be a run after a pass reception, but you still got to be physical and tackle in the running game. Well, Gary Patterson, if, if you wanted to make the comparison to technology, he's a football guy. I mean, he goes back to just the basics, okay? Right. And so Terrell Lathan right there at the right defensive end spot getting a start today, uh, in large part because of how well he played in last week's game at Oklahoma. John Coons, Chucky Hunter, Davion Pearson, the rest of that line, and they get penetration on the first down handoff for the 28. And that was linebacker Paul Dawson knifing through and cutting down James Sims for a loss of four. Well, Paul Dawson is his new middle linebacker today. He got to start in front of Jonathan Anderson, and that's, look, these are the plays that kill you. That penetration right now, and that's part of the offensive line for Kansas here. It's one thing to go on the chalkboard and go, okay, you got Chucky Hunter, and you've got Davion Pearson, you got all these, but what happens when the middle linebacker comes right through your gap? Paul Dawson from Skyline High School in Dallas made that play coming through the gap. On second and long, a short run for a yard. Davion Pearson breaks down Sims, J.C. Yeah, and going back to that last play, I mean, the left guard, Baldy, Musa Malohi, just completely whiffed on the block. And, and remember, they told us they thought this game was going to be easier because TCU doesn't do a lot up front. They just line up and play football. But it seems like any kind of little stunt, any kind of twist, any kind of little game, confuses that offensive line so if I'm TCU I'm going to do a lot more of that and now Kansas faces the dreaded third and long they need 12 Peeps goes down sack inside his own 20 John Coots 
among the TCU D linemen to get there. His second sack of the season. Well, it was just a straight four-man rush. All right, so here comes Koontz off the edge right here, but really it's four-man rush right now. Kansas is sliding it. They actually have the back end to help. So six-man protection against a four-man rush. And really, that collapsed pretty quickly on Jake Heaps. Terrell Lathan was also there. Coates and Lathan split the 19th sack of the year for TCU, tied for the second most in FBS now. Pardula punting. With under a minute and a half now left of the first quarter. A fair catch is made by TCU at the 30 by Cameron Eccles Looper. Crowd goes wild as the new weekday talk show with Regis Philbin and a cast of former athletes and journalists where you could always expect the unexpected. Catch Crowd Goes Wild weekdays at 5 Eastern on Fox Sports 1. There's Gary Patterson Baldy, 53 years old from Larned, Kansas, in his 13th year at TCU. 118 wins. The seventh most among active coaches. You got the fourth best winning percentage amongst active coaches. <laughs> From the 31, TCU. What 28 left in the first quarter? Inside handoff, we'll see Aaron Green carry the rock for the first time and advance it up to the 37 for a game of eight of six. I think the threat of Trevon Boykin today with his ability to run the ball has got Kansas way off whack right now. And that was right up the middle for seven yards. Pretty easy. Green is a transfer from Nebraska. Played for a year there. From San Antonio. And officially the game, as Baldy noted, was seven. Boykin will keep on second. Short broke out of the tackle. Has the first down and more. Nice cutback at midfield. Boykin headed to the sideline where he's brought down at the Kansas 38 by and, Dexter McDonald. And look, Mark, they had the defense for it. I mean, Heaney was right there and missed the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Probably don't say that very often that Ben Heaney misses no, the tackle. No, here he is. I mean, that's his gap right now. Now, he misses this tackle, but you make that tackle at the line of scrimmage and squeeze it, uh, you don't get this big game. The gain was 25. That's two 25-yard runs today for TCU. As noted earlier, their longest run of the season is 30. Aaron Green running wide. For the Kansas 37. Forced down on that run to the wide side of the field by Ben Haney. And also Dexter Linton. Well, that was a good play. I mean, they just strung that out. And they just flattened Green to the sideline. Haney used his speed. Uh, that's his strength, is that he is a sideline to sideline player. TCU got their wish today. They're playing at a higher tempo, and they're off to a better start. They survive an early interception. And they score on a touchdown run by Trevon Boykin. It's the third 11 a.m. kickoff this year here in Fort Worth. The Frogs have responded with a 7-3 lead over Kansas as you're watching Fox College Football. This is the Coors Light game summary as we prepare for the start of the second quarter here at Amon G. Carter Stadium in Fort Worth. Jay keeps only one yard passing. Trevon Boykin. 35 yards through the air, 33 yards on the ground, an interception and a rushing touchdown. TCU has outgained Kansas 103-19. The average per play is an edge of eight yards to one for TCU. Hey, it's been dominant. It was a dominant first quarter by TCU, and, and this is the first time this year in six games now that they've been dominant in the first quarter. Handoff here on second down and six. This drives uh, is at the Kansas 33 to start the second quarter. Keon Stowers with the tackle after the three-yard run by Aaron Green. Green, only 12 carries coming into the game, but has three on this drive now. Well, they're rotating uh, all their backs right now. You can see uh, Catalan coming off the field, Green coming off the field, keep trying to keep the guys fresh right now because they want to play fast. They want to play high tempo. We want to keep guys as fresh as possible. 
Green has run for 14 yards on the drive. As Bali noted, he's out of the game. Wayman James was in the backfield with Quentin Motion, and Boykin throws a strike for a five-yard gain and a first down. Ladarius Brown with the grab. Well, that's a good throw by, by Boykin right here. I mean, it's he sets his feet right now, uncorks his hips. The ball's thrown with, you know, some spin to it. Perfect location to Brown. I mean, that's a good throw. And it's a third down throw, or a throw for a first down. And that's an area where TCU looking to improve. Only 31% this year on third down. They converted there. Ladarius Brown will catch again. And runs it upfield for a gain of five to the 20. Kiba Augustino bringing down Ladarius Brown. Seven catches coming into the game for Ladarius Brown. Already three today. Yeah, and you know, it's just short stop routes. They're just taking what the defense gives them. But that's good. All these completions for Boykin are confidence building. Leading receivers catch-wise for TCU this season, Cam White and Brandon Carter. They each have 13 for the year coming into play today. Boykin has thrown it Brown's way three times, one to David Porter and one to Ty Slanina. Boykin in trouble, got away from one man, but then is brought down for a loss on the sack. Victor Simmons ends up with a second sack of the season. Kevin Young, though, applied the first pressure to Boykin. Well, they're coming off the edge right here, and they bring a little extra pressure. They're not a great pass rush team. They bring Heaney as well. They cut him, but they can't get away from Kevin Young. And so that's the first real negative play that this defense has produced. They need more of those plays, and that's that would make me very, very nervous if I was Kansas because he is the heart and soul of this defense right now and has been for two years. Ben Heaney is from Hutchinson, Kansas, a junior. Uh, that's a good sign. Very you know, good sign. I mean, Charlie Weiss told us if there's one guy that he reminds him of, it was Zach Thomas. And of course, Charlie was around Zach Thomas. Of course, you know, just the all-pro player out of Texas Tech. Everybody said undersized, but it was just a machine when it came to studying film, playing with anticipation. Uh, wanting to make every tackle, and when you didn't make the tackle, you were upset by it, and that's what Heaney is. With Heaney out, Skyler Miles will come into the game now for Kansas. That sack a moment ago by Victor Simmons has put TCU in a tough spot, third and 12. On the screen, Raymond James, and that play is blown up. Isaiah Johnson, who had the interception in the first quarter, brings James down for another negative play for TCU. Back-to-back -back negative plays. And so Johnson's coming from the free safety position right here. And really, I just think the pressure right here coming at Boykin, he really threw that ball with a lot of air under it, and it just floated and allowed Johnson to kind of come up there and make the play. Johnson right now with an interception today and a big play uh, back in TCU up. So Johnson off to a good start for the defense. Jaden Oberchrome has a big leg. He hit a 60-yarder in high school. His long this year is 46. He's going to get an opportunity from 49. Maybe closer. Is there a good legal substitution here? Substitution, substitution infraction on the defense. defense. They're 12 on the field. And it's still... That's the referee, Cooper Castleberry, telling us about the 12 men on the field penalty. Charlie Weiss, 57 years old, from Trenton, New Jersey. Well, that, happy. yeah, it's going to make uh, Charlie sweat sitting in the sun, standing in the sun there. I mean, just late getting off the field, 12 men were on the field, and you, you give Overcrum a, a closer field goal attempt right now. Would have been the longest of the year for Overcrum to make it 49, but now he'll try for 44 with Matt Brown holding, and Overcrum splits the sticks to put TCU up by seven. Overthrown with his eighth field goal of the year. It gives TCU a 10-3 lead at home against the Kansas Jayhawks. Fox College football is brought to you by Whataburger. Try one of Whataburger's all-time favorites 24 hours a day. And by Fred Loya Insurance. Take the 10-minute challenge and save. TCU did not win a home Big 12 game last year. They lost their four Big 12 games here at AMG and Carter Stadium. They have a lead in their first Big 12 home game in this 2013 campaign, up 10-3 in the second quarter. 
Jaden Elberkron just hit the 44-yard field goal, and Ja'Cory Shepard will not try and run this one out of the end zone. Laura McKeeman has a game break for us. I think we're going to find out what's going on in Texas OU. Oh, yes, to the Red River rivalry we go, and Blake Bell having some trouble here. Then defensive tackle Chris Whaley with the 31-yard touchdown pick six. Always fun when the big guys get to score, and Mark Whaley was once a running back. Texas leads Oklahoma 10-3. Well, well, well. Yeah, Whaley was recruited right here to be a running back. But uh, after that performance so far today, I think he'll uh, enjoy the switch. So two's coming in on the defensive line now for TCU. Mike Tuahua, among those who have come into the game. Jake Peets let it fly a deep ball in the play action. And this is caught. Wow. Inside the 25-yard line, Kansas has the catch on Barrett, no less. Yeah, for 50 yards. And this is off play action right now, so they really sell the run. Watch, all these linebackers are going to step up right now. And this is the best protection Jake Heaps has had, and we've seen him air it out right here. And this is Terzilli, who makes the start today. That's, he took the ball right away wow. from the Big 12's best cornerback. And that's kind of what Charlie Weiss was hoping for, inserting Terzilli into the lineup. He had the one catch last week for a 28-yard touchdown, and he said he was our best skilled wide receiver a year ago but he played himself down the depth chart in the spring and didn't help himself out in the fall and now he's back and that's the type of combination Charlie Weiss was hoping for from heaps the unfortunate thing for Kansas is Terzilli is hurt after making the 50 yard reception the junior from Butler New Jersey yeah. limping to the sideline for the Jayhawks and this is a great catch. I mean, right now, him and Brett go up for this ball. It's one-on-one -on -one in a phone booth, and Terzilli takes it right away from Brett. Now, let's just... Grabs his right ankle, I think, as soon as he came down. That would be unfortunate because they were expecting more big plays from him today. Kansas' longest play in the passing game this year is 77 yards. That went for 50. And then Paul Dawson brings down Darian Miller. Miller running for the first time in the game, and he will go negative three on the tackle by Dawson. Well, here's Dawson. I mean, this is his second negative play that he's created today. I mean, he runs right through the gap. I mean, right through the guard tackle gap there. Unblocked. It's, yeah, cleaned himself off after that. Second tackle for a loss. Pretty good job here by the new starting middle linebacker. Heaps throwing, caught at the 20. Was that a completion? That's the ruling right now as Brandon Bourbon makes his first catch today for nine yards. That's a one-handed catch. Just a flat route out of the backfield by Bourbon. Watch this, one-handed all the way. The right one-handed grab, and he was able to tuck it away and really protect wow. it. That's a heck of a, and protect it away from Dawson, who's trying to punch it out. And made the football move. Secured it, made a football move, and then was brought down. Kansas one out of five on third down. This third down, they need five. They're at the TCU 20. Heaps throwing. Oh, he threw it right to Barrett for an interception. Jason Barrett's eighth career interception. It went right through the hands of Justin McKay. But Barrett will gladly take the gift. First pick this year for the All-American, Jason Barrett from Fairfield, California, again, is eighth of the of this career. Yeah, I mean, he gets the gift, but I think McKay almost right through his hands. Yeah, it did, right? I mean, I mean, Jake keeps put it right on him. It's just, that's two interceptions today. It had the same thing happened to Boykin to the hands of Wayman James. I mean, Brett, yeah, I mean, we can see the stat column, Brett with another play and all that kind of stuff, but really, McKay's got to make that catch. From the 10, a first down handoff, making people miss. B.J. Catalan out past the 15 for a gain of seven. Cassius Sendish, a safety from Waldorf, Maryland, with the tackle for Kansas. TCU's 31st interception, Baldy, since the beginning of last season. That's the second most in FBS over that time. Well, you know, Justin McKay had gone to Oklahoma, and things didn't work out. He transfers set out last year, and they're trying to replace Tony Pearson. 
their big play wide receiver, their leading receiver, and they were hoping they could get some plays from Terzilli and McKay, but that was just a drop. Catalan went backwards and is still able to gain something out of that, making people miss again and then darting upfield for a gain of five before Simmons brings him down. Yeah, that's the punt returner in VJ Catalan. Yep. He always feels like, you know what, this isn't never really suggested a backup, but he backs up here to run away from Skylar Miles to go forward. But he's used to doing that in the open field. That's what great punt returners and kickoff returners do. And keep in mind, Skylar Miles is out there because starting middle linebacker Ben Heaney is on the sideline being looked at right now. He went off the field early. A trip set to the right, two to the left. And oh. a throw and an interception. And this is Shakori Shepard. And he's going to run it in for a pick six for Kansas. Ja'Cory Shepard from Mesquite, Texas, not very far away, weren't 25 Texans on this roster, took advantage of really miscommunication between Boykin and his receiver on the outside. He's running, he's throwing a stop. Ja'Cory Shepard jumps in front of him, picks up a convoy here, running right down the Chisholm Trail, and Boykin's like, I gave you the signal to stop, and he didn't. And the communication leads to an easy throw. touchdown by Kansas. A 32-yard run back for Mesquite Horn High School's Ja'Cory Shepard. The pick six. Kansas has all 10 of their points today as a result of TCU turnovers. Shepard just tied the game. A momentum-changing play. Trevon Boykin throws the interception. Ja'Cory Shepard runs it back 32 yards for the score. Well, watch Boykin right here. He's going to give Cam White a signal. He's going to just rub his fingers here in his left hand. That's telling him to stop because he sees the corner playing off right here. So he sees this corner off. He wants him just to run a stop route. And for whatever reason, Cam White just keeps going. But you've got to throw these balls on time. That's how a young quarterback, like, the trust breaks down. There it is. Like, I gave you the signal, run the stop route, and we are not tied 10-10 right now. So Corey Shepard reads it all the way, and uh, he's the easy benefactor. But there's a communication breakdown in the receiver quarterback. Big kickoff by Trevor Pardula through the end zone. JC, what you see on the pick six? Well, you know, like Baldy said, I mean, their, their passing game has struggled quite a bit all year anyway. I mean, their leading receiver only had 13 catches on the entire year coming in, and it was stuff just like that, just not on the same page. And the game plan for Kansas defensively was to come in and stop the run and make Boy can beat him with his arm. Now he's a talented guy. They all know that, but very inconsistent. And some of that inconsistency is because he and the receivers aren't on the same page all the time. And that, of course, led to the pick six. Well, you wonder, JC, just what that effect is on a young quarterback and his confidence. I mean, he's had one receiver drop it that led to a pick. And then he had a wide receiver run a wrong route. And so now, what's his confidence level in the passing game? Yeah, he starts holding the ball a little bit too long, making sure they're open. The ball came out here on a running play for Wayman James, and Kansas has the third turnover. First play of the drive, Wayman James loses the ball. Victor Simmons has recovered for the Jayhawks. Victor Simmons, the other inside linebacker right here. Recovered by Kansas. Boy, that's a great hit. That's Shepard. He that's just ran Corey it back. Shepard. That's your Corey Shepard putting his helmet right on the ball. You can't. You know how low he had to go to knock that ball out as well. Uh, you know, look. There's a lot of different ways to win a game. I mean, Kansas has not won a Big 12 game in 22 straight Big 12 games. You can see this defense right now is leading them in that direction. The pass, Jake Heaps. Flag is down, nowhere to go. Heaps on the run. Forced out of bounds at the 24, but again, there is a marker down. Holding by number 65 of the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty, and it's still first down. Mike Smithberg from Fairfield, Iowa. Well, here's Smithberg inside right here, working along with against Chucky Hunter you see that right hand is outside and now he's got his left hand underneath him and look they're struggling up front I mean Smithburg this is 
fifth straight start at right guard. He came in here at Iowa Western Community College. They were hoping to get better play from him. They tried him at center. It didn't work out. That's a costly penalty backing him up here early. After they had just had the fumble recovery and Barrett jumped the route. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. it is a catch for Kansas. Barrett, a fraction of an inch away from a running of an interception. Well, he's, he's what you call cluing right now. He's looking at this stack formation and the quarterback. So he's seeing them both right now. This is what good corners do. I mean, he just plays with tremendous anticipation. He missed it, but you know what? That's how you have to play the game. I mean, J.C., you know, you got to play the game aggressively like that and take some chances. I don't think any problem with that. Christian Matthews caught the pass. It was an eight-yard gain. Remember, a penalty pushed him back after a fumble couple. Heats throwing. Heats for the end zone. Incomplete. <laughs> was looking for Trey Parmalee. Kevin White with the lockdown coverage at corner against Parmalee. I mean, he's in his hip pocket. I mean, here's Parmalee coming outside right now against Kevin White. So you look at this and you go, okay, he's playing off. Now he knows he's on a go route. That's what you call the playing over the top. He beat him to the route. Hey, guys, I, I like the aggressiveness that Kansas is showing, throwing the ball down the field. Remember, TCU safeties, those guys were creeping way down because of the run game, and they came out hammering the run. Now, obviously, it's third and long, but even on first and second, I like the way they're throwing it down the field. Third and 12 here when they go short, try to get better yardage for a field goal. They won't have a chance. Terrell Lathan gets to heaps again. So did John Lewis. And a sack all the way back to the 45. What a response by the TCU defense after the Horn Frog offense turned it over. Uh, I mean, look, the coverage is good. It's, they're in lockdown mode right now. They're on them. Okay, they're daring the throw. And then as they're holding up their end on the back end, the front four is getting home. One of the best pass rushing defenses or defensive lines in the whole country. 20 sacks now this year for TCU and a lot of coverage sacks. And Kansas recovered the fumble at the TCU 34, but they go backwards. They do get a nice punt, though, from Pardula. They are down inside the five special teams, and they kill it at the two. When we come back, we'll join Laura McKeeman in our Fox College football studio for a look at what's coming up at halftime. Welcome back to Fox College football. Due to time constraints, we'll move ahead to later in the game after these commercial messages. 10-10 here in Fort Worth, TCU and Kansas. Our sideline analyst is J.C. Pearson. What are you thinking, J.C.? Uh, you know, guys, coming off the field, Javon Boykin looked to me like he was really frustrated, and I don't blame him. I mean, his numbers don't look well, but it's not really his fault. It's this receiver's fault, just like Baldy was talking about up top, and the offensive coordinator, Jared Anderson, told us that in the meetings that these receivers have been so inconsistent, and that's why they don't have very many catches, but I'm wondering how it's going to weigh on the mind of Javon Boykin as this game moves forward because he is starting to show some frustration. The numbers today, J.C. and Baldy for Trevon Boykin are 6 of 11, 40 yards, two interceptions. Barrett missed a tackle. Sims is able to keep his feet driving forward and make it back to the line of scrimmage. Paul Dawson has had a great day at middle linebacker getting the start today instead of Jonathan Anderson. Well, they, call, they, they called Jason Barrett's a number right here. He's on a corner cat blitz. Your playmakers just love their numbers called. So he doesn't make the tackle, but he really makes the play. Because you make James Sims stutter in the backfield right there. And the, the, beautiful thing, the good thing about that blitz is he never gave it away. Sims will give it another go on a straight-ahead run. Maybe on Pearson with a tackle after a five-yard pickup, putting Kansas in third and five. I like Jason Brett, though. I talked to him down the field before game. He always has a smile on his face. He's just one of those guys that plays with a great deal of energy, a great deal of confidence, and he's a happy kid. He likes the game of football. Now, he's he got to jump around the shower just to get wet. I mean, he's there's not a whole lot to him now, all right? Body fat of a hummingbird, but he can play the game of football. He's a good tackler, but his specialty is right now third down. Let me go lock up on somebody. Blew my eyes to his belt buckle and not let him get away. AP third team All-American last year, Jim Thorpe watch list this year. And it's Paul Dawson again, and coverage bringing down Brandon Bourbon. Short of the first down, they needed five, they only pick up two. Well, Paul Dawson has had a nice job, nice game at middle linebacker. 
I mean, here he is. He's just reading this right now. Here's, that's his man. He comes here. He's going right with him. So Bourbon's in a backfield, flat route. He gets over the top, never adjusts his angle, cleans up the tackle. We've mentioned Paul Dawson's name here probably five or six times. A lot of them were negative plays. Got a nice job here at middle linebacker. Ten tackles wow. today, transfer from Trinity Valley Community College in Athens, Texas. He was actually a wide receiver some in high school at Skyline in Dallas. Ooh, that's <laughs> Mardula's punt spinning and going into the end zone for the touchback. That's a 50-yard boot by Trevor Pardula, who has a 78-yard punt in one game earlier this year. Nightly on Fox Sports Live, join Jay Onright and Dan O'Toole, along with Donovan McNabb, Andy Roddick, and Carissa Thompson as they bring you all the scores, news, and highlights you need. Catch Fox Sports Live nightly on Fox Sports 1. The TCU offense starting at their own 20. Very reminiscent, reminiscent of the game last year in Lawrence, Kansas. That TCU won 20 to 6, but they turned it over four times that day. Allowed Kansas to stay in that game late into it. Kansas has lost 22 straight Big 12 games. It's Boykin down the sideline, incomplete at the 50, looking for Cam White. There's a marker down. The ball bounced off his shoulder, but he was interfered with by Dexter McDonald. That was a late flag. Play was over. The ball had bounced off of Cam White, and then they threw the flag. Pass interference by number 12 of the defense. It's a 15 yard penalty, and it's a first down. Well, let's see. Dexter McDonald here is getting good coverage. That's well. Tucked on his shoulder. Yeah, he got his arm on him. He kind of restricted the ability for Cam White to get both hands up, I guess, but I don't know. Looked like a pretty good play on the outside. The 8.3 penalties per game average by Kansas, ninth highest total in FBS. I like the way he challenges him. Right after that, he gets right up in his face and challenges the receiver again. There's that moving snap. Boykin with the flip to Catalan. Catalan able to drag tacklers forward. We think about the elusiveness, but how about the power there by Catalan on a run into Jayhawk territory for 20 yards? Well, this is the second time they've run this today. This kind of moving option sweep that they kind of favor. And you watch, he's going to get a head start here on this play. See, the defense is already a man behind. And that's what they want to do. Eventually, they want to just pitch it as quickly as they can. Substitution in action by number 23 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. The penalty on Catalan. So it will be first and 15 rather than first and 10 after Catalan at his 20-yard run. That's TCU's first penalty today. Kansas has three. And when you have Boykin in the backfield along with Catalan, I mean, that's two guys that can really turn the corner on you. Uh, you've got to defend an awful lot of offense when those guys are on the field. TCU at the 50. Boykin is in trouble. Escapes the rush for now. He is caught from behind, though. Stumbles to the 40. Michael Reynolds with a sack. From Wichita, Kansas, Michael Reynolds has his third sack this season. Part of the problem is when you're Trevon Boykin and you're the athlete that you are and you're a good runner, you always think that you can elude the rush. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, he can just come and chase right now. But, okay, he doesn't like what he sees. He's stuck on his runner. But you just think right now, I can outrun this defense. But that's the guy that they were spying, Michael Reynolds, on him today. And he did a good job coming off the corner. That's part of the reason why they're spying him. He's got the speed to chase him down. There was a five-yard penalty, now a loss of 10 on the sack. TCU is at second and 25. Late in the play clock, the snap is off. The handoff is made, and Aaron Green is tripped up. There was a hole, but Dexter McDonald got enough to bring him down after a five-yard run. Well, that's a, we're seeing good plays from McDonald, because if he doesn't make this play on this cutback, uh, James may keep running. So you're going to just see uh, Reynolds right here is, again, playing on the outside right now up against the tight end. Good, good job. That's what you call setting the edge. He turned it inside, and then McDonald was in what you call the C-gap. So really, that play by on the outside by Reynolds really allowed McDonald to make that tackle. Walker was the tight end. Stephen Bryan, the junior from New Deal, Texas. 
third and a long way to go. They need 20. Boykin was directing traffic for the to keep it. Makes a move to the 50. Inside the 45, got a lot back, but not nearly enough. Fourth and eight coming up but after one, a 12-yard scramble. And Mark, one of the things they want to do with Trevon Boykin, and it's difficult for guys that are athletes, is once he starts scrambling, can he keep his eyes up down the field? Yep. And I just think that that's got to be, if he's going to take a step up at the quarterback, yeah, he's elusive. But he's got to keep his eyes up down the field to see what receiver breaks open. As soon as he becomes a runner, first of all, you get hit like that and you limp off the field. And then you kind of give up on any sort of a play down the field. Hunting here, Ethan Perry. He's averaged 43 and a half yards today. His season average is 41 yards per boot. The line of scrimmage, the Kansas 43, so trying to pin him deep. And will. Checked up and will be killed at the five-yard line by TCU on special teams. Let's get a Fox College football game break. What does Laura McKean make half for us right now? Well, Mark, the underdog Texas Longhorns have come to play against Oklahoma third and 12 in case McCoy with a beautiful pass to Marcus Johnson, 59 yards to put Texas up 17 to three over the Sooners. This game is turning out to be a really exciting matchup. Mark Fallville, Brian Baldinger, J.C. Pearson here at the newly rebuilt second season of Amon G. Carter Stadium. The clouds are breaking. The temperature has warmed to 86 degrees. Yeah, it's a good day. Now, if I'm TCU's defense right now, I want to try and stop him. Use all my timeouts right now and keep Kansas locked up here and try to get the ball back one more shot here as they should, they should not let his time tick off. I'm surprised that TCU isn't using their timeouts. Sims ran it for seven yards. I mean, they could get the ball back here if you stop them on three plays and they're content. Now they're going to call the timeout as 14 seconds tick off the clock. TCU calls their first timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. Maybe the timeout should have been called earlier. Obviously, Gary Patterson not happy with uh, Chris Hackett among those on defense. Coming up on the Fox College Football Halftime Report presented by Arby's. set the game clock to 41 seconds. Laura, McKe Laura McKeeman and Tony Banks will have highlights of the Red River rivalry matchup. Also on the Big 12 today, Iowa State at Texas Tech. And they'll be talking about the Baylor Bears' first road test later this afternoon in Manhattan and the Little Apple against Kansas State. How did Art Bryles get it so that he doesn't play a road game until October 12th? I mean, that's a pretty nice job of breaking in a new quarterback and a lot of new players into that system all at home. Another run and a first down is picked up and more. Sims bounced off Hackett and is out beyond the 20. That's the 19th run today for Kansas. They're almost at the two to one ratio, by the way, that Charlie Weiss wanted. 19 runs, 10 passes. Well, I think he wanted more production, but I don't think Charlie Weiss, I think he wants to make this as short a game as possible, take as much air out of the ball as he can, and keep it as tight as he possibly can until maybe the final possession. Try to win it at the very end. The 20th running play today for Kansas. Jonathan Anderson and a whole lot of black and purple swarm to the ball and James Sims is forced down his 15th carry today and his final one and the final play of the first half. Well, Charlie's got some good plays from his defense. Good job by the special teams right now and 10-10 game, he'll take it. Uh, Got to be disappointing for Trevon Boykin and the TC offense right now when they had a a sense of urgency to come in here, and offense will play much better than what they've done in this first half. Halftime in Fort Worth, the score, TCU 10, Kansas 10. When we come back, Laura McKeeman and Tony Banks are in the studio for Fox College Football Halftime, presented by Arby's. NBAstore.com's got you covered. NBAstore.com. One store, every team. It's game time, baby. When's the game start? Right now. Hey! Touchdown, game! Yeah, the party's here. <laughs> 
the Big 12 Conference like Fox Sports Southwest. You get weekly in-depth coverage of the top teams in college sports on Big 12 Showcase, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors, Wednesdays and Saturdays on Fox Sports Southwest. Life's too short to skimp on what's important, so always wish bigger, dunk harder, act a little sillier, and when it comes to lunch, think bigger, like Church's new Big Tex Club Sandwich. Two all-white meat tender strips with American cheese, pickles, creamy mayo, lettuce, and lots of crispy bacon. Freshly prepared on buttery Texas toast. The new Big Tex Club is a lot of taste and a lot of sandwich for just $3.29. Only at churches. Come in now for a free Halloween bag and $3 off Hotel Transylvania on Blu-ray Combo Pack. Come in today for the Covert View at GMC of Austin's Truck Month event. The newly redesigned 2014 GMC Sierras have arrived, and Covert is passing on huge savings this month only. Covert View at GMC of Austin is offering $5,000 off any new 2014 GMC Sierra pickup truck in stock. Hurry in for these huge savings for a limited time only. Come ask for Corey Covert and see why the Coverts have been trusted for 104 years years and counting at 183 in Duval, Covert View at GMC of Austin. Students from all 50 states and 105 countries flock to Kansas each year. Because of the educational value, the reputation, the renowned professors, and the undergraduate research opportunities that come with being a Jayhawk. TCU, the Horn Frogs getting ready to take the field for the start of the third quarter. College football on Fox. I'm Mark Folliwell, joined by Brian Baldinger in the booth. We'll talk to J.C. Pearson, our sideline analyst, in a moment. But first, Baldy, let's pick your brain about this 10-10 first half so far. Well, it's not what we normally see in the Big 12. I mean, but we're talking about two teams that are struggling offensively, and we're talking about a turnover-marred first half. First 30 minutes, I mean, it was just turnovers on both sides of the ball right here, and that's Kind of how it got started from the very first play of the game here for TCU is Javon Boykin has one bounced off his running back's hands and Isaiah Johnson picks it off. Jason Barrett got a gift here. That was a drop pass uh, by uh, Kansas. And then Ja'Cory Shepard kind of reads the eyes of Javon Boykin, has a pick six there, the only Kansas touchdown. Now uh, that uh, picks up between him and Cam White. And then maybe James fumbles right there, recovered by Kansas. And so you look at these stats right here, I mean, it's defensively minded. I mean, TCU held Kansas to 100 total yards of offense in that first half on 30 plays. I mean, they did what they did, but then TCU really can't get their passing game going right now. And so, JC, I bring you in here right now. We started this game by saying that Kansas was playing their fifth different offensive line combination and how quickly they could start to gel and come together might determine the outcome of this game, but I don't really see that right now being the biggest issue for Kansas. Yeah, and they've got to do some things to help those guys out up front. Like you said, they're a patchwork group, and I think the quarterback's got to be sharper. I think Jake Heaps has to be sharper. Only five completions in that first half. A lot of the balls are late, and they're behind receivers, so they don't have a chance to run and catch a short pass and turn it into a big gain. I think if he could be sharper, it's going to help that offensive line and that KU offense in the second half. JC, conversely, Trevon Boykin is a guy right now that's trying to play quarterback. Yeah. He's actually playing pretty well. He's not getting much help from his receivers. Miscommunication drops right now. I just wonder, three first half, you know, turnovers right now, does he have confidence? Does he have confidence in his receivers? 
when it gets a third down and he's got to throw it. Well, I started to see some frustration from him as he was coming off the sidelines there at the end of the half. So I think what we're going to see the second half is more runs by Trevon Borkin, whether they're designed runs or whether he's going to drop back and pass and then pull it down and run because you have to think that his, his confidence in those receivers has to be down just a bit because they, they've hung him out to try. So I think we're going to see him run the ball a lot more this second half, and they need it, really. The first half stats again brought to you by Bank of America. Just to recap, TCU seven first downs, only four for Kansas. Total yards, Kansas 100, TCU 156. Kansas passed for 69, ran for 31. TCU ran for 116, passed for only 40. Eight yards deep into the end zone, and so no opportunity for B.J. Catalan to return the kickoff of Trevor Pardula. Trayvon Boykin, 40 yards in the air. You know, Five you runs for 56 yards of B.J. Catalan. Ball. Yeah, you look at Boykin and Catalan, and most of those rushing yards came on that uh, second drive of the game after the interception. They went to the read option, and really Kansas didn't have an answer for it in that drive, and they basically ran the ball down the field wondering if they would come out to that style of offense here in this third quarter. A little warmer and a little uh, sunnier than I think most expected today, and the muggy factor is on the rise. Lincoln will throw on the first play of the third quarter. It's caught by David Porter. He broke through a tackle. David Porter at the 50. David Porter will pick up a block. Racing for the end zone. David Porter will get there. Touchdown, 75 yards for Porter. David Porter catches his first touchdown of the season because two Kansas Jayhawks just completely whiffed on the tackle. McDonald and Sendish. I mean, ran right through arm tackles. And the fans aren't in their seats here, and TCU gets an early touchdown. The first play of the first half was a disaster for TCU. It was an interception by Kansas. The first play of the second half is a thing of beauty. Junior from DeSoto, David Porter, his first touchdown reception this year, the third of his time here at TCU. Watch him go through the tackle of Dexter McDonald and off to the races. 75 yards, the Frogs up by seven. Fox College Football is brought to you by Frostbrood Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Before today, the longest play from scrimmage for TCU was a 56-yard pass play, but now a 75-yard throw and run for a TD. Boykin to David Porter. Well, I mean, really, this play, this play should be stopped right there. I mean, there you go. You got McDonald, you got Sendish coming right here. I mean, you got to get him Porter down for 10-yard gain, but when your safety and Porter miss like that, the result is 75 yards. And that's not what Tech, uh, Kansas talked about in the locker room at halftime. Darian Miller from the goal line. Hit at the 18. Driving. Out to the 25. There will never be a more simpler BMW <laughs> scoring drive to tell you about. One play, 75 yards, 13 seconds. And again, it betters the Juwan Story 56-yard touchdown reception against SMU as TCU's longest play from scrimmage this year. Well, and that will help the stats for Javon Boykin and help his confidence with his receivers because uh, they came out and put the ball in his hands and said, you know, we're going to believe in you. We want our receivers to play better. And Porter just helped that cause. His touchdown pass this season for Trevon Boykin. Now Jay Keeps throws in the flat. It's caught by Brandon Bourbon. Bourbon with a two-yard gain on the pass play with Elisha Olabo knocking him down. Jay Keeps is throwing for 69 yards. Sims ran for 53 with the bulk of the work running-wise, and Andrew Terzilli caught a 50-yard bomb in the first half. And really, their big play player, Tony Pearson, is not playing today. He's here, he's on the sideline, but he's not playing. And he's a guy that could match a big play that we just saw from Terry Porter. And so now you got to find those kind of plays from, from other guys. David Porter, the 75-yard touchdown reception as TCU up by seven, a minute into the third quarter. Baldy was just referencing Tony Pearson. 
numbers about his big play capability coming up in a moment. That was deflected, but still caught with 25. And now Sims gets a block. Racing up the sideline, fun with the ball, and it's recovered by Hackett for TCU. They got the big play, but turned it over at the end. Chris Hackett from Sean Tyler High School and Tyler with the recovery. Well, they got the play they wanted. You know, they got the screen away to the weak side. Really, I mean, he did a good job of selling it. He got a couple of guys out front. And he just got careless with the football right here. The ball's away from his body. Look at Hackett. Well, he's going to end recovery, Baldy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there was nobody trailing the play. And really, Sims, you get down in the open field like that, you just, the ball comes away from your body. You're looking for the big plays. His eyes are looking to match that touchdown by Porter. And look at the body is loose right now, and Hackett doesn't even see Hackett. Hackett sticks this left hand out and just pokes it away. From their own 47. Boykin throwing. Porter again. They make the tackle. Sendish, coincidentally enough, was the guy who got him down at the first down marker. Well, for 12 yards there, J.C. Yeah, guys, I think a big thing for this KU defense is Ben Haney is back here on the bike. Doesn't look like he's going to come back to play. And one guy on this defense that was a difference maker that the coaching staff told us was Ben Haney. Looks like he's done for the day. And it's still first down. There's Ben Haney on the bike. The last place that Dave Campo, the former Cowboy head coach and now defensive coordinator for Kansas, wants to see Ben Haney. Well, you lose your best player in offense last week in Tony Pearson. You lose your best player on defense. Uh, Kansas is just not one of those programs that there's not a drop off when the backup goes in there. David Porter has the best receiving yard day for. A TCU player this year with 109 yards on three catches. About the first two passes of the third quarter. On the option, Boyk at the toss. The run by B.J. Catalan on first and 15 after the penalty. The run is a five-yard pickup. Gains the penalty yardage back. Ben Goodman with a tackle for Kansas. This guy, the Miles, has to make that play. And really, when they start moving that quarterback before the snap, Really, that's the third time they've run that play. You really should know exactly what's going on by the third time you see it. First of all, you had to practice it during the week. Dave Campbell can put him in a position to make plays, but you got to tackle in the open field right now. And one missed tackle by two players as Kansas down 17-10. Joey Hunt, the center from El Campo, snaps back to Boykin. This is second down and 11. Boykin. Will run. Beat Skyler Miles to the edge. Stepping up was Dexter Lent to force Boykin out of bounds. The run right to the sticks. They needed 11. That's about what Boykin picks up. Well, you know, this is, I mean, he's their leading rusher on the team. And so this is what always drives the Dave Campo crazy right now. <laughs> trying to hold him up right there, protect him. It's good sportsmanship. But really, I mean, that's what drives you crazy right there as you cover the receivers down the field but he's going to be able to escape like that up the middle. First down at the 30. And Boykin able to weave through the Kansas defense into the first down. Wrestled down by Victor Simmons and Dexter Lynn. Well, you know, Boykin has started wide receiver this year. He's played running back, you know, when Paha was healthy. And here he's pretty good running back. You make a guy miss there. Your eyes are down the field. You're not allowing anybody to get a clean shot on you. He's got good running back instincts. Run for 49 yards today. Boykin and the TCU Horn Frogs moving. This started because of Kansas's second turnover today. A fumble by James Sims. Big hole for Catalan on the handoff. Catalan's run on first down is inside the Jayhawk 15. Flag comes out at the end. Castleberry, the referee tells us momentarily. Grabbing the face mask by number 26 of the defense. Penalty's half the distance to the goal, and it's first down. Holloman from Philadelphia, a sophomore. Well, this is not a good third quarter for Charlie White. An extended halftime because of homecoming here in Fort Worth, and they haven't done anything right since they've come out of the tunnel. Charlie Weiss telling us this week that he practiced uh, 
more lightning. There are any kind of rain delays or lightning delays. They had two of them last year, but that's not a factor today. But they're not sharp coming out here in the third quarter. At the seven on first and goal, a handoff to Catalan. Catalan hit the five. And they hang on by the ankles. Jake Love wouldn't let him get any farther. Officially to the four, second and goal. He practiced for lightning. There was rain in the forecast, but the uh, skies have cleared up. The weather guys miss it every once in a while, but they'll tell you to, to a sports person, Baldy, they say, hey, you start predicting ball scores yeah. four or five days ahead of time and see how well you I do. always just look out my window myself <laughs> and see what his weather's doing. That's the best way to do it. Wholesale substitutions here on the defensive line for Kansas. I would expect to run with that fullback in the backfield right now. And Stephen Bryant has come in at fullback, and now there's a whistle on this second down and goal to go snap of the four. With all that changing. An illegal substitution by the defense. 12 players on the field. The penalty's half the distance to the goal, and it's still second down. More things going wrong for Kansas. Yeah, it's not just the players. I mean, that's you got to put that on coaching right there. Uh, however you substitute, and there was a wholesale substitution there. Putting 12 guys on the field is always falls on the shoulders of the coaches. They started at the 47 of TCU. They've taken it 51 of the 53 yards for the end zone. This practice a substitution again. I don't know if they... Gary Patterson now wants a timeout to talk about things. TCU calls their first time out of the half. There's Dave Campo again, the Kansas defensive coordinator. Trevon Boykin will lead TCU back to the sideline with this timeout. The Frogs up by seven. In the third quarter, it's a TCU 17-10 advantage over Kansas. The Coors Light cold hard facts are brought to you by Frost Group Coors Light. They're in quite a run of success here at TCU. 86 wins since 2005. The most wins by a school in the Lone Star State. The most wins by a private school. The fifth most overall in FBS. They had a run from 2005 to 2011 of 77 and 13. The second best winning percentage. Mm -hmm. Only Boise State was better than the nearly 86% games won by TCU. Out of the timeout, handoff, Catalan surging on second and goal. He is in for the touchdown for TCU. Fifth touchdown of the year for B.J. Catalan, and a good job on the, on the right side by Eric Tausch and the big V, getting good push. Guy staying low right now, just digging him out. Good cut by Catalan and then stretching that ball out over the field and hanging on to it at the same time. Now, Baldy, if you're going to bring up Big V, the right tackle for huh? TCU, we've, we've got to say, just to make sure that everybody knows, yes. it's Halapuli Vati Vaitai. Well, I can see that you've been busy <laughs> working on your vowel pronunciation. <laughs> but he's Big V, and he helped plow the road for the two-yard touchdown run for B.J. Catalan. It started because of that fumble by James Sims, and then Catalan takes it in, and TCU has opened up the lead to 14. B.J. Catalan has run for 72 yards today. The last two, a touchdown plunge to put TCU in front, 24-10. This year, TCU has forced 15 turnovers. Two of them have come today. And the second turnover that was forced earlier here in the third quarter is what led to the Catalan touchdown drive. Jaden Olberkrone, the sophomore, with the kickoff. A chance to return. Miller a catch, Darian Miller at the five. It just outside the 20, he'll make it to the 25. That forced turnover a moment ago is what will feature in the Geico playbook, Baldy. Well, you're talking about the turnovers. Let's watch Chris Hackett here because this is a pretty good screen by James Sims, and there he punches the ball out. All right, it's not enough just for him to punch it out, though. He's also going to double back and recover it, too. So we got the forced fumble, and this is just a heads-up play. Long arms, he's six foot two. he pokes it out, and then he doubles back, and he gets it. And so that lead quickly turns from 17-10 to 24-10. And look, he's the leading tackler on this team. He's their turnover machine. Pack is playing another good game for him. They'll run it with James Sims. Sims broke one tackle and is able to carry a couple of other defenders to the 35. Picked up 10. 
They started at the 25 after the run back by Darian Miller. Okay, so, you know, look, I mean, you're now down two scores. You're down 14 points here. How long will Charlie Weiss be patient to run the ball with James Sims and be content with doing that? You're going to need some plays out of the passing game. As long as you can keep running it, you some run the play action. There's probably some individual plays they have in for this week. Running it here. Elisha Olabode steps up and meets Sims. A greeting at the line of scrimmage. Olabode stops Sims for a short game. Yeah, I mean, look, th these two ha uh, safeties now, Hackett and Olabode, they lead the team in tackles. They're one and two in tackles. They get nosy now. They want to make the plays. So that's when you have to think about play action, get the ball over the top of them. Yeah, you're right, Baldy, because those safeties are way down in the box. That time, Ola Bode is standing right there. He's unblocked because you don't account for the safeties in the run game, so they're unblocked. And like you said, if they're that far down, got to play action and go down the field. Heaps, pushed out of the pocket. Marker down, Heaps is down. Sam Carter sacked Jake Heaps and a penalty on the play as well. J.C. and I did the uh, Grambling TCU game, the first game here mm -hmm. last season. Elisha Olavode had a pick six in that one. By Holding the by number 73 of the offense. The penalty is declined. It's second down. Well, this is what Jake Hips had to look at down here. There's Jason Brett down here on coverage here. Correction is third down. He's doubled there. There's no way you can throw it to Trey Parmalee. And up at the top, Kevin White, same thing on Josh Ford. This makes this defense very good. One of the reasons why they're the best sacking teams in the league is they get excellent corner coverage from two very good players. And now Kansas is in a very, very tough spot, to say the least. Third and 18. Screen again. Sims. Broke away from Chris Hackett and then shoved out of bounds by Jonathan Anderson. The Kansas just isn't good enough right now to overcome negative plays. You get a hold. You get a negative play. They're just not a big play offense right now where they can just drop back and pick those yards up. And so they have to do everything meticulously correct, every play, in order to kind of stay on schedule. They scored 10 points off turnovers in the first half, including a pick six by Ja'Cory Shepard. But they missed a tackle, giving up a 75-yard touchdown run on the first play of the third quarter. Touchdown pass, that is. And then fumbled. And that led to TCU's 53-yard scoring drive a moment ago. And this is fumbled on the punt. Here is the chance for Kansas. Brandon Carter, who has not seen much action today, fumbles the punt running up, and Kansas has recovered it. The Jayhawks with a play on special teams. Just not a smart play by Brandon Carter at all. I mean, I, he's not involved in the passing game, so now maybe he thinks he's got to do something in the return. This ball is short. He's looking down to see where Kindred is. He never gets underneath the ball. Never gets underneath it right now, and so really that's exactly what Kansas needed to give him life and to keep him in the game. One of two players who handled long snapping duties for Kansas recovered that. John the on the field was that the punt was muffed and recovered by the kicking team. The previous play is under further review. John Wordle, there he is again. Shares long snapping duties with Riley Jeffers, and he recovers. Let's make sure that Brandon Carter did touch it. Yeah, yeah. there's no oh, doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want to make sure, which is fine. But yeah, this is going to give Kansas real life right now. It's just not smart here. I mean, when you have to put your hands out like that, you should just get away from the ball. There's no harm up 14 points with just getting away and just letting it bounce. That's decision making by the returner. After further, re the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. That'll get you in the doghouse pretty quick. That kind of play. And it's been an up and down season yeah. for Brandon Carter as it is. Brandon Carter caught a huge pass last year in Lawrence that broke the game open the tight game, but that wasn't a good decision, J.C. No, and, and the thing is, Bald, is he took his eyes off the ball so late. As a return guy, you can put your eyes down early, but he waited so long, and then by the time he looked back to find the ball, he could never get there. 
Now Heaps and Kansas have it the TCU 27. And they throw it incomplete on first down. Hey, Heaps had good protection that time. And he had Mundine open in the middle of the field. Jermaine Mundine, another Texan on this roster, by the way, Baldy, from Denison. Yep. Up by Lake Texoma. Well, Mundine is a guy that, you know, can win in the red zone for you, this part of the field. I mean, he's got two touchdown catches this year so far. Now caught a pass down the seam for a TD last week against Texas Tech. Heaps throwing on second down. Luke says win, and it is Mundine, and he will get away to score. Touchdown, Kansas. <laughs> Well, they came right back to him, and he won on a corner route. And he, look, this is what he is. He's a receiver at tight end. Protection was, was very good up front. Four-man rush. Good job by Sterling at right tackle. Here it is. Just a little man beater there crossing at each other. And Mundine's a finisher. Jermaine Mundine with his third touchdown reception of the year. Matthew Wyman makes it a seven-point game. <laughs> It was a turnover, the fourth of the day by TCU that sets up Kansas with the short field. And on the second play, Jake Heaps finds Jemay Mundine. He'll step into the end zone. Heaps loves it as he throws his fifth touchdown pass of the season. Kansas down by seven now. From the crew that brings you America's number one pregame show comes Fox Football Daily with all the news, opinions, and insight you need on the NFL and college football. Fox Football Daily, weeknights at 6 Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1. Oh, they got a slate of good games tomorrow, including Cowboys and Redskins. One That's great the game tomorrow night, yes. Yeah. Through the end zone, B.J. Catalan won't get a chance to return. But Laura McKeeman will get a chance for a Fox College football game break right now. Well, thanks so much, Mark. And to the SEC we go. 14th ranked South Carolina at Arkansas. Connor Shaw going deep. Finds Demir Bird for the 45-yard touchdown pass. Of course, Steve Spurrier, a former quarterback himself. He's loving it. And 31-7 to game cost, guys. He was my former offensive coordinator at Duke a long, long time ago before he was ever a head coach. Javon Boykin, 6 of 11 for 40 yards in the first half, 2 for 2, 87 yards here in the second half. They had a man go in motion for the far side, but they went inside handoff Wayman James, and Wayman James nowhere to go. Yeah, Isaiah Michael. Johnson and Michael Reynolds. Yeah, Isaiah Johnson, who had uh, the game's first takeaway. First pass by Boykin and Michael Reynolds had a good game today. Anytime you can get TCU into a negative situation here, make them lose a yard, it's uh, it's good because it puts more pressure on this quarterback here to make a big play. James lost a yard, half yard. Fake to James this time, and a throw and driven down. Cameron Eccles Luper did catch it at the 30. And Cassius Sendish, who missed a vital tackle earlier in the third quarter, was very sure about that one. Now, that one was uh, textbook down. I mean, he drove really the face mask right through the midsection of the receiver right here and just drove him right into the ground. I mean, that's the shoulder. It's just textbook. Heads up football. And I'm sure Sendish is still thinking about that first play of the third quarter where Porter scored on a broken tackle. That'll stay in your mind because I think these two safeties, junior college transfers, have played pretty well this year. Both teams struggling on third down today. That's been their MO all season long. TCU is ninth of the Big 12, 107th of the nation, and 31% on third down. They need about four. Boykin will throw, and along the sideline, the ruling is it is caught by Cam White. I think he's going to be short. That's a good job by Cam White of coming back to the football. Kansas had a five-man rush. Good throw by Boykin. Yeah. His feet are inside the 35. Yeah, but it's going to be about a yard short. Yep, yep. That's a great series by Kansas. Good concentration by Cam White, getting the toe down. Really short of the first down mark. TCU's four turnovers today have been converted into all 17 Kansas points. And now they're going to get the ball back with Ethan Perry with a wobbly punt. And oh, oh. Emory! We saw Brandon Carter with a miscue. Emory fumbles but is right on top of it. Uh. <laughs> 
By 36 to go on the third, Kansas has it at their own 21, Baldy. Well, this his decision here is, all right, fair catch, but then he's thinking, well, if I let this thing bounce, that ball's going to really get a lot of real estate right now. So let me just catch it and down it, but he took his eyes off it. Look, he's looking at the defender in front of him and not doing his job, which is basically to possess the ball first. Seeing two returners here take their eyes off the ball. Just careless mistakes on the last two returns. Charlie Weiss looks on. We noted earlier the 22-game Big 12 losing streak. They also lost 20 straight on the road. Their last road win at UTEP September of 2009. Heaps with a long ball down the seam on the right side. Great coverage. No shot for Trey Parmalee to get any separation from Kevin White. Now we've seen both White and Barrett just lock up their receivers right now. There's got to be something open underneath. That was max protection. They kept both backs in. So they're looking for the big play. And they've gotten a couple of them today. One to Terzilli. We haven't seen Terzilli since his 50-yard catch. Nine for 16, 131 through the air today for Heaps. A score and a pick. The delay, the handoff. Sims, ankle tackled, but still able to jump out to the 29. Chucky Hunter got him. Mundine's taking himself off the field, which is crucial on his third down. He's a guy that you would look to on third down for the tight end position. Something happened to him on the play. Mundine getting looked at on the sideline. Kansas, a short three is what they need. They converted their first third down today, but they're 0 for 8 cents. Yeah, but this is what he needs. He needs a go-to guy on third and three. And a go-to play on third and three. A low snap won't help. Now pressure down he goes. Paul Dawson and Jonathan Anderson bury heaps on the blitz. I mean, they just blitzed the middle linebacker right up the middle. Dawson with at least his 11th tackle today. He's completely unblocked on the play. So there's a protection breakdown right now. I mean, here he is. He's coming right up the middle. I mean, he's unblocked. He's unaccounted for. So I don't think there's any hot read that can take care of a blitzing middle linebacker. Another sack for TCU for today, putting them at 22 this season. Louisville leads the nation at 23. Cameron Eccles will for a chance to return. Hold to the 30, hold to the 50. Two flags are down, and Eccles Looper has a 30-yard return in that neighborhood anyway, 30 yards, that may be coming back with 4.01 to go on the third. Pardula has some leg, but sometimes he doesn't get great height on the ball. He gets great distance, and so the returner has a chance to take it back. 50 yards on that punt for Pardula, who's second in the nation, 47 and a half per kick this year. A junior college transfer, Charlie Weiss was talking him up at Big 12 Media Day in Dallas back in July, Baldy. Well, they had a poor kicking situation a year ago. He wanted to, he brought in two junior college uh, transfers. During the here. return, holding by number 35 of the receiving team. The penalty is 10 yards and it's first down. Disappointing penalty. The call on Sammy Douglas, and it will negate that return. You weren't shy when you when you talked to Charlie about their poor special team situation last year. It's better this year. Now TCU, the miscue on special teams. Yeah. Well, you're going to get a hold on the play. Uh, it was actually picked up by two different officials. So... TCU doesn't get quite, quite the same field position that they were going to get. Instead, Catalan will give it a go on a handoff from their own 32. Kansas says the ball came out and did they recover? Keon Stowers has recovered it for Kansas. Look at the energy that Kansas defense has. I mean, these turnovers right now, they're just feasting on it. Stowers is the one who knocked it out. With 3.54 to go in the third quarter, it looks like Jordan Tafai is the one who got the recovery. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Stowers is the captain, the nose tackle. He picks the big, puts the big right ball out and strips him. There's the, there's the strip, falls out. And Tavai is, oh, yeah, Tavai's just right there. Picks up the loose ball, and that's clean. 
Hey guys, I talked to Dave Campbell before the game about how well his defense have been playing. And he said, yeah, they've been playing well. And, but they got, can only worry about themselves. Can't worry about the offense. They've got to do their job. Well, today the defense has given this offense every opportunity in the world. They've got to take advantage sooner or later if they're going to have any chance to win this game. It's really on this offense. Now, five JC, turnovers. Five. Five takeaways now. I mean, Dave Campo can't, he can't expect anything more than that from this defensive group. Minus their leading tackler, Ben Heaney, who's not been in there since he got hurt in the first half. Coming into the play today, it was a minus two turnover margin for the season for Kansas. They're a plus three today. Brandon Bourbon will run the ball, and Somersaults and loses the ball, and it's Paul Dawson with it. Paul Dawson has recovered for TCU. What a game today for Paul Dawson. Well, as soon as you try to jump over a defender, the ball comes away from your body. And that's what Bourbon does. He's going to try to jump over the defender right now. There's the, there's the right arm. Now, is any part... The ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by TCU. The previous play is under further review. I mean, there it is. The ball's completely away from his body right now. There it is. Now, is the elbow down first before the ball comes back? Kevon Gamble is the player who upends. Uh, that ball comes loose. I don't think that's going to get overturned, but that's Brandon Bourbon who isn't, doesn't carry the ball very much, just careless with it, trying to make that leap. That's yeah. why they tell backs, don't leap, because you can't balance yourself in the air without that ball coming away from your body. Only his eighth rush this season. They're just looking for putting the ball in any playmaker's hands they can, trying to get a play. Did run the ball more the last two seasons. 40 carries over the last two years at Kansas. There he is jumping. You Over see gamble. the ball's away. Yeah, that ball squirts loose as soon as it comes down. Now, the elbow would put the, the back or any offensive player down. But when the ball starts moving like that, this should be a fumble and a recovery. Clean recovery by TCU. And it would add to the day that Paul Dawson is having 11 tackles, you two and a half the loss. The runner's arm hit before the ball came loose. It's third down oh, wow. at the 34-yard line. Wow. All right. They're saying the ball didn't come loose when that elbow hit. All right. They're saying right now that then they're saying okay. before that ball moves that he's officially down. That is the college rule, different than the NFL. In the NFL, they always say, you know, the ground can't cause the fumble, but in that situation, it can. Kyle's was saying the elbow was down first before the ball came loose. They are in field goal range. Matthew Wyman has hit for 52 yards this year. They're at the 34, 37. Heats his throw for the end zone. He had a man but could not connect with Josh Ford right along the sideline. Josh Ford had a step on him, but you got to keep the ball in bounds. Guys, I'm telling you, Jake Heaps is just not real accurate today. I mean, he throws this ball out of bounds. I'm standing right here watching the flight of the ball. It's coming right to me. Yeah, and, and he's got to throw that ball down the field, allow his receiver a chance to go make a play. He makes the receiver drift out of bounds. Just not real accurate throw. Matthew Wyman won the game against Louisiana Tech with a 52-yard field goal, but this 51-yard attempt comes up short. Hit right off the upright. Just right inches. At the, right at the crossbar, right at the yeah. intersection of the that the angle of the upright and the crossbar. Couple inches further, and that's a that's three points for Kansas. I mean, just inches away. The fifth turnover of the day committed by TCU is not cashed in by Kansas. No. Now the Horned Frogs will start from their 34 with 240 remaining in the third quarter. Play clock is already down to four. Aaron Green a handoff. And Aaron Green straight ahead for a couple. Jordan Tavai at that tackle after the fumble recovery a few moments ago. 
can Kansas do it again? I mean, can they take the ball away again off a tip pass, poke it loose? I mean, that's kind of what they, what is the only thing that's kept them in this game right now. All of their points are off turnovers today. They've scored off three of the five turnovers. And they've had, the other two have been fumble recoveries in TCU territory that they have not been able to do anything with. With two minutes left in the third, Boykin with a quarterback keeper. He runs out of a tackle. He cuts wide at the 45 and steps out just in the Kansas half of the field at the 48. On the zone read, Boykin gaining 16. That was a good decision by Boykin that time. Picked it up and then, you know, he is a good runner. I mean, he makes people miss. He's got good eyes for it. It should be a big part of this offense when he's at quarterback. It's a 65-yard running day now for Boykin Baldy. Well, he's had over 100 yard rushing just uh, a couple weeks ago against Texas Tech. He was the leading rusher on this team coming into today. Trips left, one right receiver wise. Aaron Green surging forward on the inside handoff just inside the Kansas 45 with Ben Goodman wrapping him up. They've done a good job on Wayman James today now. I mean, Wayman James, we mentioned this stuff earlier today, but. The all-time leading yards per carry rusher in TCU history at 6.6 .6 yards a carry, better than LaDainian Tomlinson in his career, but they've corralled him pretty well. He is a powerful guy with great leg strength. Catalan today has got 77 on 10 carries. Aaron Green, who just carried as 8 for 28. Wayman James only 2 for 9 today. On the option, Boykin turns it up the field and is wrestled down at the 40 by Tadarian Johnson. Junior defensive lineman from Jackson, Mississippi. Big, big play here. Sure Kansas is. Kansas get the stop on third and two. At the final minute of the third quarter. Well, they're running the ball real well in this in this drive right now. I would be surprised if they if they went to the air with it. There's no reason to. The back is Aaron Green. And Aaron Green will run it. And Aaron oh. Green is stood up again by Tadarian Johnson. Johnson tackled Boykin on second down. And then he just manhandles Green on third down. Yeah, I mean, here he is right in the middle. I mean, does a good job playing off of uh, Joey Hunt. Takes on the double team right here, and he comes out of it. Splits the double team, stays alive. That's a great defensive play by Johnson. That's a big man at 6'2", <laughs> 290. And Aaron Green felt his wrath. Third down, big tackle. It will be fourth to two when the fourth quarter starts. Paul Dawson and the TCU defense have had a good day. The Kansas scored off another turnover in the third. It's 24-17 TCU as you're watching Fox College Football. Our Coors Light game summary with the fourth quarter about to start. TCU leads Kansas 24-17. Quarterbacks Jake Heaps and Trevon Boykin, pretty similar passing numbers. 131 for Heaps, 136 for Boykin. Boykin has two picks today. Total yardage-wise, TCU's outgame Kansas 321-166, but as you just circled with the yeah. Telestrator, 5-2 turnovers for yeah. TCU. Yeah, I mean, it's always the number one stat in football. The Kansas City Chiefs this year, undefeated there. They lead the league in takeaways, turnover ratio. It's the NFL, it's college, it's high school. It's always that. That's the equalizer. The fourth quarter starts with a punt from Ethan Perry. Looking for field position here. And they're down. Cam White catches and kills it at the five. That's a 35-yard punt, but that's all about pinning Kansas deep, which they do. The Associated Press top ten. Alabama's at Kentucky later today. Mm -hmm. Big game that will be on Fox Sports 1 is Oregon at Washington. Yep. You got Clemson and Boston College, Stanford playing in the Pac-10 at Utah. Georgia losing to undefeated Missouri. Missouri 38 to 20. Uh Tough game for a and at Ole Miss. a and they, uh, they struggled last week, yeah. They struggled last year against a uh, against Mississippi. Not in the uh, AP Top 10, but uh, the Red River rivalry has opened up to a 36-13 Texas lead. And off James Sims. This is a drive for Kansas starting at the 5. He heads to the edge, and Sims is cut down to the 10. Kevin White. Brings down James Sims. The most rushes in a game for Sims this year was 20 against Louisiana Tech, and this is his 20th of the game today on the second play of the fourth. Yeah, let's take a look here. Lewandowski at left tackle along with uh, Damon Martin, the left guard. 
Here's Sims with another run. Yeah, he does not get uh, the blocking on the edge that he got the last time. A two-yard pickup. Paul Dawson is one who delivered at the uh, the hit that we can hear from here. Yeah. They, they, they played well. I mean, he's, he's been all over the field. I mean, he got a chance to start today. He's taking advantage of it uh, in so many different ways. Sacks, fumbles, uh, tackles for losses. I mean, it's one of the best games middle linebacker has played in a while. Here's a run on third down. Sims slipped, but I think Sims was able to inch forward for the first down. It's Darian Miller. Darian Miller, not Sims. Miller. He had carried it 31 times this season coming into today. Able to run for three yards and a foot when they needed three. Well, they needed that extra foot that you just mentioned. Miller again. Miller hit in the backfield. Back to the line of scrimmage. Marcus Mallett from Cleveland, Texas, a junior, delivers yeah. the hit. You know, there was a time when this was truly linebacker U here. Uh, you know, there was Tank Carter and Robert Henson played for the Redskins. And David Hawthorne starting for the Saints right now. Darrell Washington, what a game he had for the Arizona Cardinals last year. Keeps the throw for the first time on the drive and a poor pass out of bounds on second down and 10. They got a little bump that time by Olabode, but really they had him bracketed all the way down the field. We saw Mundine come off the field. And, you know, the pass receiving tight end, we haven't really seen him come back on the field. We saw injuries at the wide receiver position. Pearson not playing today. We saw Terzilli go down after one catch. Mundine go down. Coming into the game today, Kansas had 18 plays this year from scrimmage. There were 20 yards or more. Pearson accounted for eight. So they certainly missed big playability there. He spun away from the rush. Terrell Lathan and threw a ball that was nearly picked by Chris Hackett. He did get a fingertip on it, but unable to intercept. That was not a good throw by Jake, but he, he didn't get any help from his left tackle. Lewandowski, who got beat, kind of flushed him out of the pocket. Now he's moving. Well, he just flat out missed. He just flat out missed Darian Miller. I mean, Miller's wide open. You make that throw, maybe Miller has a chance to catch it, run for the first down, but it was just so far off the target. 9 of 19 now the passing day for Jake Heaps. Pardula. The punt takes a poor Kansas bounce. And is out right at the 49 of TCU. 36 yards, they'll call it on the punt. This gave TCU the lead on the first play of the third quarter. It was David Porter, their longest play from scrimmage this year. 75 yards from Trevon Boykin. More from the Red River rivalry. Here you see Case McCoy, and he's going to lost a perfect one to Mike Davis, the 38-yard reception. And that makes it 36 to 13 Longhorns as the third quarter winds down. This one is turning out to maybe surprise some. <laughs> surprise. How about shock some people? Let's see, what, let's see what Boykin could do here on first down and 10. He was looking to throw and finally is wrapped up by Ja'Cory Shepard. Right back near the line of scrimmage. And yes, surprise, shock, pick your your verbiage. You know, look, I, I don't think anybody thought that Oklahoma's offense was a world beater, but to have 13 points up there against a defense that, you know, gave up, I don't know, they fired the defense coordinator after they gave up, I don't know, 500 yards to BYU. To BYU. Yeah. Manny Diaz out, Greg yeah. Robinson in. Good first play here by Kansas defense. Now TCU at their own 48, second and 11. After they lost in non-conference play to Ole Miss to go to one and two, Mac Brown said the goal was to win the Big 12, and they're poised yeah. to start three and zero if they finish off the fourth quarter against Oklahoma. A run by Catalan, and that takes them into Kansas territory, but only a short gain of three. Good play by Skylar Miles, who's getting a chance to play a lot here with Ben Heaney out. Good tackle. The Mattress Firm all-access update. B.J. Catalan, 11 rushes, 80 yards, one touchdown today for Catalan. Season high on the ground for Catalan. He's also lost a fumble today. They'll send him in motion here on a third-date snap, and Boykin will throw the long ball down the sideline, and 
it bounces away from Echoes Looper, trying to make a circus catch. Oh, my goodness, he almost did. <laughs> Dexter Linton was back in coverage. Well, you just saw an example of uh, Boykin's arm. That was 50 yards in the air, and it was a perfect deep shot. Now, Echoes Looper, whose father is the wide receiver coach, uh, he's going to be hurt as he... Yeah, he uses the slot right here. They got what they wanted. They got one-on-one -on -one coverage. Boy, I thought the ball was perfectly thrown. Comes right down on his tailbone there. Juggles it twice. Lent popped it up yeah. into the air. And then Eccles Looper. That's just great effort. Could have called some kind of interference there by Linton. Was a hot potato. Just couldn't control it coming down. It was coming down out of bounds. Would have been that would have been the catch of the year in college football. The talk was that uh, Alabama had it against Georgia State last wow, year. Wow, that was pretty good. TCU had a short field to work with, but they go three and out. A punt by Ethan Perry is caught. Connor Embry, the fair catch at the 13. Three and out for TCU. Kansas will have a shot. 11 and a half minutes remaining. Boykin almost got the home run throw. His team still up by seven. And by Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 36 straight years. Remember, TCU started the season ranked 20th in the AP poll. Casey Paul Hall returned to the team this year, broke his arm in the second game of the season. Devontae Fields, the defensive newcomer in the Big 12 last year, was suspended at the beginning of the season and only appeared in three games. We learned this week he's going to need surgery and an injured foot, and he'll end up with a medical redshirt this year. Jake keeps handing off Sims with his 22nd run of the game as Kansas starts at their own 14. <laughs> They spent three weeks in the poll, TCU did. They, yeah. they lost close game to LSU, close game at Texas Tech, sandwiched in between was a win against Southeastern Louisiana. They had a win over SMU and then lost again last week at Oklahoma. No Paul Hall, maybe back in two, three, four weeks, we'll see. Field's done for the year, Baldy. Well, Paul Hall, has been he's been throwing, but, you know, the break in three spots was on his left forearm. And so you just, you know, like Rob Gronkowski in New England, you just can't put him out there until that's fully healed. Heaps under pressure. Throws the screen, caught behind the line, and Sims back to the line. <laughs> That's where you'd love to have Tony Pearson in that screen game like that. A guy that, you know, makes people miss in the open field a little bit better. Sims is better between the tackles. But really, you know, TCU has seen the screen here today. Uh, another tackle by Dawson, and there's Tony Pearson. Uh, nothing worse than just having that sideline view, and all you can do is watch. But uh, with player safety paramount at every level of football, when you get a concussion, you just have to go through the necessary channels. Make sure you pass all the baseline tests to get back on the field. Third and ten for Heaps and Kansas. Heaps with a step up. He'll throw it on the move and incomplete at the 30. Was looking for Christian Matthews. Elisha Olabode draped on him in coverage. Yeah, Olabode with a, a pass defense. Really good play. He did a good job of climbing the pocket just to get better vision that time. You've just not seen the separation that he needs from receivers to, to get him open right now. I don't know how many more times you can put this Jayhawk defense on the field and ask him to come up with another stop. Still plenty of time left here. But they need a stop. For the ninth time today, Trevor Pardula is punting. Averaging 45 yards a kick today. Earning a scholarship. Pardula. Oh, this is oh. going to take a great roll. Eccles Looper will feel it at the 30, giving up more ground. Now he has a convoy of blockers up the sideline. To the 50, and down he goes at the 41. That bounce, that bounce from Pardula really aided, I thought, in Echoes Looper that return. There was nobody from Kansas around him when he picked that ball up. The punt was 55 yards, but Echoes Looper got back 28 on the return. TCU good field position and a seven-point lead. 
College football on Fox 24-17. TCU leads Kansas. More college football on Big Fox today at 2.30. Baylor at Kansas State. Look what they did to West Virginia last week. 864 yards, 73 points scored as Art Bryles squad continues to put up unthinkable offensive numbers. Yeah, and you think about the West Virginia game last year when they lost 70 to 63, what that was like. Those numbers look like a combined total of two teams. But uh, Art Bryles has a system right now, and he's got tremendous skill at receiver, Lake Seastrong, at the running back, and all pro at left guard. I mean, they've just got talent everywhere down in Waco. The starting field position today for TCU at the 42 of Kansas. Boykin on the zone read keep for two yards. Blake Seastrong, who announced himself a Heisman candidate in this offseason and has done nothing to uh, shy away from it. Those are the first half yards he had a week ago against West Virginia. Uh, going back eight consecutive games over 100 yards going back to last year, really. Baylor's fortunes turned around last year when they beat Kansas State. They put uh, Seastrunk in a tailback, and uh, they haven't lost since. And off they went. Second down and eight with nine, 12 remaining. TCU in front, 24-17, looking for the bubble screen. Hey, Baldy, going back to, to Baylor, you were talking about all that firepower and speed they got on offense. But I think defense is really where they made huge strides this year. You talk about the, the offense and all the yards. Well, they're getting more opportunities because that defense is getting stops and they're taking the ball away some. And that's always been the problem at Baylor is they're, they've always had offense, but the defense have been suspect. This year, the defense is playing well also. I agree with you, JC. They've got depth now. They've got playmakers over there, Dixon and Hager. Good uh, too deep on the defensive line. Phil Bennett calling the defense. Let's see what the Kansas defense does here on third and eight. They get a stop on a pass that was intended for Eccles Looper. The pass break up by Dexter Linton with 9.02 remaining. And they went zero coverage, meaning they you went all out blitz up front. They brought everybody up front. I mean, here they all come. They bring seven. Get the ball out of Boykin's hands. Now, can Linton hold up on the back end? And he does. That's a, a gutsy, risky call by Dave Campo, but it worked for him. Seventh time today that Ethan Perry punts. He's averaging 40 yards today. And Kansas will be the beneficiary of a little bit of a bounce. 8.54 remaining. Kansas needs seven, but they're going to start 90 yards away with just under nine minutes to go. Every Saturday, get ready for kickoff with the Fox College Football pregame show. Aaron Andrews, Eddie George, and Joel Klatt preview all the games in action from around the country. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Catch all the latest news, biggest names, and interviews. The Ford Fox College Football pregame show, Saturdays on Fox Sports 1. Fox Sports 1 is now available on all major cable and satellite providers. To find it, go to foxsports1.com. Relentless, and it's just getting started. Critics call Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate the new best rivalry in sports. I'm gonna break this girl. Get hooked on the series everyone's talking about. See that door over there? That's the door you go out right now. The Ultimate Fighter, every Wednesday night at 10 on Fox Sports 1. Fox Sports 1 is now available on all major cable and satellite providers. To find it, go to foxsports1.com. Super production, The Bridge. Cierren la frontera. Sonia Cruz. Marco Ruiz. Homicidio es el paso. Policía estatal de Chihuahua. El asesino está aquí. Me llaman el asesino. No mires el reloj. ¡Cúbranse todo trabajo! 
The Bridge series premieres tomorrow, 9 8 Central, only on Mundo Fox. 8.54 left. Kansas has the ball at their own 10, down by 7, JC. Yeah, a big blow for this TCU defense that Jason Barrett is on the sideline with a shoulder injury. I noticed that he wasn't on the on the field the last series. He's not out now. It looks like he's not going to come back into the game. So could be a big break for this Kansas offense. They got to try to throw the ball to make some plays down the field. Keyon Gamble, number 16, is the guy who moves out onto the field. Kevin White, the other corner. Heaps under pressure. Got away. Throws to the goal line. Larger down. Jemay Mundine didn't make the catch. James McFarland was providing pressure by the TCU defense. Oh, by number 64 of the offense. Penalties half the distance to the goal, and it's still first down. Randall Denton in a guard right now. He said from the very beginning that another shakeup on the offensive line today. How, how soon could they start to gel and play well together? How well could they play individually against a, a dominant defensive front of TCU? Trips to the right on first and 15. Heaps in his own end zone, and he threw it at the feet of a receiver. Now, if they call grounding, no, no, there is no grounding. The receiver was number six. There you go. Cooper Castleberry uh, fighting through the uh, microphone breakup and all, telling us that Darian Miller was the well, receiver. Well, they're trying to run another screen here to, to Miller, and really, I mean, they're sitting on. It. I mean, first of all, he gets knocked down by Randall Dent, but. Waiting. Now a handoff to Sims, gaining three. The most plays Kansas has had on his drive today is six. Their longest drive from a yardage perspective is 55. This one started 90 yards away from what they need, a tying touchdown. And it's tough. I mean, they're, they're third and 11. I mean, they've been in third and long seemingly every single drive today. And so they just don't have a lot of playmakers, and they don't have an offensive line that can hold up in this situation. They have third and 12 here. A throw over the middle. Brandon Bourbon catches at the 15. Hit at the 19. Hit just short. Sam Carter. Paul Dawson. What a game for Paul Dawson. What is it, 14 tackles? Yeah. I mean, really, sideline to sideline. Big plays. I mean, he just threw that ball underneath just to get the ball out of his hands and was hoping that Bourbon could come down with the first down. This guy... We mentioned the last time. I think this is his 10th punt. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he's, er he's earning his scholarship today. Paul Dawson, 15 tackles officially. Kansas saw Ben Haney have an 18 tackle game earlier this year. And Dawson is at 15. <laughs> TCU just stopped rushing. He got tired of rushing Pardula. Fair catch by Cameron Eccles Looper at the TCU 35 with 7.27 to go. And Pardula, with his team backed up, does deliver another big punt, 55 yards. See, with Dawson coming off the field, what TCU did and what was smart is they kept their starting defense on the field for that punt. Just in case, you know, Charlie wanted to try a fake or Pardula wanted to take a fake like he did uh, last week against... Uh, Texas Tech and he caught the snap on that big punt last week at his own goal line and he had a read where he was able to yeah. audible into a big punt and, and obviously not really the right time to do that. No, and it really it took a 10-10 game and it blew it open and Kansas was never able to get back into it. From the 36 TCU Boykin will throw it and completes it to David Porter, who's the leading receiver today for TCU. He comes down for a nine-yard play. Well, he wanted to go to Porter the first time, and he pulled the ball down because there was interference, and then he stayed on him. Porter's just going to run on a crossing route right here. He sees the safety on him, kind of double clutches, and catches it right in front of Sendich. Gain of nine, second and one. Kansas has all three timeouts as we approach the final minutes of the game. A run for Aaron Green into Kansas territory. The chains will move. Ja'Cory Shepard, who had a pick six earlier today with that tackle. He got big V over there at left tackle right now. Going from the right side to the left side. Ran right behind him that time. Vitae on the left. He's the starter typically at right tackle. Eric Tausch is out at right tackle. Juggling the whole group up there right now. 
Yet Joey Hunt still at center. John Woolridge has moved up to right guard. Jamel Naff at left guard. Short run. Ty McKinney with the tackle of Aaron Green. Green's got a lot of carries today. Ten. Had only 12 in the first five games. No, we haven't seen Wayman James here. I mean, he's been out, so really the other guys, Green and Catalan, have kind of picked it up. And, of course, Eric Tausch out at right tackle, his father. Terry Tausch played at the University of Texas, played for the Vikings for a long time. He made of uh, Plano, Texas. Boy, got a quick throw caught by Angeles Looper. Stutter steps, and then upended to the 41 by Sendish. I know Sendish missed the tackle in the opening play of the third quarter that led to a big touchdown run, but he has been active. He, uh, he was a junior college transfer. He was here for the entire spring, so he really learned both the strong safety position and the free safety position very interchangeably. Invaluable, though, especially on this third down because he can play close to the line of scrimmage. Five tackles today for Sendish, and this is a big third down at the Kansas 41. They need five. Motion for Aaron Green. Boykin with a good pocket. He throws, and it's caught. Cam White at the 32 of Kansas. Uh, right in front of Ja'Cory Shepard. That's a big throw for Boykin, and trusting Cam White to make the play. Way to follow through for Boykin. Good location. Cam White came in today. Him along with Brandon Carter leading in receptions. Each had 13. White has two today. David Porter is the leader with four for 118 for TCU. The clock becoming their teammate now as TCU throws on first down. Brandon Carter's first catch. Carter on the run. Stumbles down inside the 20 at the 15. Officially, the 17 appears to be where they will mark it after the tackle by Sendish. Really good fake that I did that time. I mean, here's Carter right here, just a little bubble, but really good job on the outside right here. The block right now. That's what you got to be in this spread, you know, spread offense is you got to be a good blocker. So David Porter, who's been their leading receiver, throws a, give, a good block for Carter. Guys, also, that was a, a great placement on the throw by Morgan. He throws it up the field so that Carter is catching it moving forward and not having to stop and regather himself. Now a running play for Aaron Green. They snap it at the 17. Jake Love got him low on the tackle at the 15. Some of the goals of Gary Patterson's offense today coming into today's game. They wanted to snap it 75 to 80 times yeah. on offense, but only at 59. Now, Jared Anderson told us yesterday that if they have 75-plus plays on offense, it probably means they're converting around 45% on third down. Well, they're not meeting the goals today, but they did say that they want to finish games better. Right now, this is the type of drive that they're finishing on. Very well executed right now, spreading the ball around, and really, it's been the play of Boykin on this drive. Well, they've taken four minutes off the clock as Green stutter steps and gave up some ground. That snap was at the 14 and a loss of a yard. Third and eight with Isaiah Johnson, the leader today on the defense for Kansas in terms of tackles with his ninth. And you can tell, I mean, they're tired. They're tired, but they're playing hard, especially in the secondary, because Shepard and Johnson and Sendish, they played nearly every single snap in this game right now. That was the 60th snap in, you know, 85 degree heat. So they're giving it everything they've got right now, and they'd love to deliver one more knockout punch here on this play. We see a blitz forming right now. On third and eight at the Kansas 15, and the blitz gums up the works. Nowhere to go for Aaron Green on the handoff. Kevin Young was the one who swallowed him up. Well, that was a run blitz sent in by Dave Campo, and it was the right call. And they trapped him for their third straight loss in a row. Just hugging the line of scrimmage right now. I mean, here's the nose, Young, and here comes the linebackers on the run blitz. Young works in a backside A gap. He gets the penetration, takes Green down. It's a good play. You no, know, you can blitz to get after the quarterback. You can run blitz to stop the run as well, and that's what that was. Kansas has two timeouts remaining, burning one here with 2.40 left. And we await the field goal of Jaden Obercrone, mm -hmm. which has a chance to make it a two-score lead for TCU. No, I mean, that's, this puts the game away. I think it's been a great effort by this defense. Tremendous effort by Kansas defense. 
know the defensive line, Agostino right there. Do they have a block in them? The big boys up front. Agostino about 6'3. See if he can get the big call up right now. Overcrown hit today from 44. Matt Brown of the holder. And the kick by Overcrown is through, and TCU takes a 10-point lead with 2.34 to go. Officially 37 yards on the boot by Jaden Overcrown. TCU 27, Kansas 17, as we get a Fox College football game break from Laura McKeem and Laura. All right, more from the SEC, guys. This Missouri-Georgia game, and watch for the trickery here. James Franklin out of the game with a shoulder injury, so that's wide receiver Bud Sasser with a 40-yard pass to LaDamian Washington for the touchdown. It's 34-26. Tigers in the fourth. Still some time, but this one's getting crazy. Be a big win for Gary Pinker and that crew in Columbia, Missouri. Second year in the eight in the SEC. And they come out of today undefeated. Uh, they'll be ready to make some noise. What a weapon it is to have a guy like Overcrome in the kicking game as mm -hmm. TCU sees their kicker go 9 for 11 on the season in field goals and very calmly booted through a pivotal 37-yard field goal to put him up by 10 with 2.34 left. And he's been excellent on kickoffs, too. A lot of touchbacks today. See if he can knock this one through the end zone and try to eliminate any return. Now Kansas down 10, 2.34 remaining. At the goal line, Ja'Cory Shepard bounced off a tackle. Good bounce off another one, though. Brought down to the 15 with 2.27 left as we look at today's Delta Fawcett touch to old play of the game. That was the first play of the third quarter. Quarter on just an outside, breaks two tackles on the outside by McFarland and Sendish, and he goes the distance on the play. 75 yards, and that broke open a 10-10 tie at halftime. Easiest score that TCU's had all year. Or their leading receiver today. And the biggest play of the game. Junior from DeSoto, Texas, just south of Dallas. Just down the road here. Come on, go. Now Kansas with two timeouts. Needing a touchdown and a field goal to tie. And Paul Dawson. Almost an interception to add to his 15 tackles today. Well, Paul Dawson got the chance to start today in front of Jonathan Anderson. He's taking advantage of it. A good break on the ball, not a well-thrown ball. Good break by by Dawson. Thought he should have had it, obviously. I'd like for Christian Matthews to give him a, a little better angle to throw that ball. Step up by Heaps. Delivers on the right side to Sims. And down inbound, shy of the 20. Touch-wise for James Sims. 23 rushes, 5 receptions. So 28 touches today for Sims. And there was Paul Dawson in on his 16th tackle. All over the place. Funny how guys just emerge as, as the course of the game goes on. And Dawson from the beginning to the end has been dominant. Another third and long. Heaps throws. It's caught, but short of the marker. Kevin White brought down Trey Parmalee, the sophomore from Overland Park. Got to give credit to this defensive line of TCU. I think they've got four sacks today, but they've been good against the run. They've rotated eight guys up front, minus a couple of stars. There's Dawson with penetration. He just blew that play up. Fourth and one, and the last gasp for Kansas ends on Paul Dawson with yet another tackle. That will put him in three and a half tackles for loss today and 17 stops in the game. He just, I mean, whether it's a run blitz call or not from the sidelines, I mean, he just gets this penetration right here, right now. He sees it, he feels it right through the, you know, the left tackle has got to come down to stop his penetration. When he sees it like that, that's just good. I mean, you can... Sometimes linebacking play, Mark, is just instincts. Where a ball's going to go. Now, I can, if I can get there before before the play begins to develop. And you saw tremendous instincts from Dawson today. And interesting to see those instincts from a player who was, at one point in his football career, wide receiver. wide receiver. I know. How about that? Probably wasn't a diva wide receiver. I know that. A run here for B.J. Catalan and a tough run. Another first down to the Kansas 11. Courtney Arnick. 
117, there is an injury here for Kansas. Well, we said his name many, many times today. The Whataburger, what a player of the game. Paul Dawson, number 47 for the TCU defense. Well, you know, on a game that where offense was ugly and there was a lot of turnovers and balls weren't thrown or caught very well, this guy, I mean, from the very beginning today, he's been all over the field. Blitzing, instincts, tackling the open field, defending passes. I mean, really, you want, you know, I always said this, in a 4-3 defense, you get a middle linebacker that plays fast that makes your whole defense look fast. I, I can't imagine putting him up bigger numbers in a game than what Paul Dawson has done today. I don't know if he's come out. I think he's played every snap today. And again, a converted wide receiver in his days at Skyline High School in Dallas, but there is certainly a history here at TCU of Gary Patterson. A tremendous linebacker. Yeah, and, and recruiting players, Baldy, who necessarily weren't defensive players at high school, but he's turned good athletes into very, very good defensive players here at TCU. He has, Mark, and it's, it's, it's athletes with speed, though. I mean, that's what Dawson has. You can't obviously coach that, but then if you combine a great athlete with instincts and then you train them and then you get them to get in the film room and study things here looking at it to Darian Johnson to Darian Johnson had a couple of big yeah, plays on defense earlier in the fourth quarter yeah take nothing away from this defense of Kansas I mean they've gutted it out there you can't ask for anything more than five takeaways in the game to keep your team in the game and the big man to Darian Johnson being helped off the field here with 117 remaining. Well, he's one of those junior college players that, uh, you know, Charlie Weiss went after. Recruited. How many of them? They ended up signing 20. 20. 18 were announced on signing day and added a couple more. They had 20 junior college transfers in the 2013 recruiting class, and 11 of those players, they lost a couple. Yep. And 11 of those players came into today's game on the 2D. Yeah. And so Johnson and two safeties, I and mean, we mentioned a bunch of them, they've come in and had a chance to play right away and contribute right away. What this will be today for TCU is their first Big 12 yeah. home win. They went 0-4 uh, last year in their Big 12 home schedule. They still get a chance later this year to play Texas here and West Virginia here. Final minute of the game. JC, we don't see a team turn the ball over five times often and survive to win, but TCU's about to do that. Yeah, they sure are. Not real pretty, but a win is a win, and the first conference win, I'm sure they'll take it any way they can get it, but still a lot to work on next week going to Oklahoma State. TCU will go to three and three. Remember, six wins makes you bowl eligible, and TCU has been to a bowl game in 14 of the last 15 seasons. They have some work to do in that regard, but they get their first Big 12 win today, and Charlie Weiss will see his team fall to two and three, 0 and two now in Big 12 plays. Gary Patterson and Charlie Weiss meet here in the final seconds. Take off on a 27-17 win for the TCU Horn Falls. And Gary Patterson's going to take the win. I mean, they've still got a lot of work to do offensively, but you know what? You got a young quarterback. You've got some receivers right now that got to grow up and play better. You know, it's it's you can take development as long as you're winning games. And so that's what they got to do. I mean, Trevon Boykin had a good football game today. 27-17, the final TCU wins. Let's get some thoughts quickly from J.C. Pearson with Gary Patterson. Coach Patterson, big win, first conference win. Probably not the way you drew it up, but a win is a win. Well, I was worried all motion. You had the SMU, then you had Oklahoma. We didn't practice a lot of emotion. You can't turn the ball over and score points on their defense, and but you find a way to get through one. We got ourselves back to three and three, and now you, you got Oklahoma State. So uh, we're going to take it either way we do it. We got to keep getting better, but uh, I'm happy. Absolutely. Defensively, Paul Dawson, fantastic game for you today. Well, we've been waiting on Paul. He's a guy that can really play. Uh, but we, I, Simon Wise, we haven't been doing what we needed to do. But if he comes in, he keeps doing. He's a guy that can play at that level, and he'll make us better. Coach, congratulations on your first win. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. The final today, 27-17, yes, TCU over Kansas. And next up for TCU at Oklahoma State next week. Kansas, meanwhile, will play a home game next week against the Oklahoma Sooners. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't get easy for, for Kansas. But for, you know, I think for TCU, you see potential. Because Boykin can throw the ball. And you do see potential right there. It's a good offensive line. 
They need to be consistent. They need to eliminate the bad plays right now because defensively, they've got some guys that can lock up on receivers right now. They can tackle well. They've got depth. Special teams are a bonus. I think this team still has a lot, a lot of life left in it, and there's still a lot of room for improvement. They pick up the 10-point win today. Again, the final score from Amon G. Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas. TCU 27, Kansas 17. Don't forget to join us next Saturday at 12 Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific for a Conference USA matchup as Southern Miss travels to East Carolina. For Brian Baldinger and J.C. Pearson and our fantastic crew in Fort Worth, Texas, I'm Mark Fallowell. You've been watching Fox College Football on Fox Sports Networks.